Hey everybody, welcome to episode two of Feature Flashback. This is the episode show. Episode two. Episode two. Deuces. <laughs> this is episode the show. Dose. <laughs> this is the, ep- the not this episode. This is the show. <laughs> not just this one. This is the show where we look back at the films that came out 10 years ago this weekend, one decade, when we were but boys of 12, our minds like putty in the hands of these directors. <laughs> um, and we talk about it. If they've stood the test of time, if we feel differently about them than we did if we were 12, or like this week, if it's our first time seeing them, how they seem to a jaded, cynical, (laughs) 22-year-old cis white man in in 2022. This is is the movies that people were demanding that we talk about. Yeah. Yeah. When we told our friends we were doing this show, they said, you got to talk about Think Like a Man (laughs) and The Lucky One. People were demanding it. Someone threw a brick through my window with a note on it that said, think like a man now. (laughs) And so we're here to deliver. You don't need to throw any more bricks. Please. (laughs) You can stop putting roadkill under my crawl space. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, So, yeah, my name is Jacob Sanger, uh, and with me is my dear friend. Oh, me? (laughs) Hello, I'm I'm Colin Spalton. There he is. <laughs> All right. All right. Without so, further ado. But before we get in before we flash back, Jacob, I gotta mm-hmm. ask you, mm-hmm. did you see anything new this week? I have not been to the theater since our last recording. Mm-hmm. Wait, is that true? Yeah, I haven't. But I we actually both are going to see The Northmen tomorrow yes, night. Yes, we are seeing The Northmen tomorrow. And I'm very excited. I'm very excited as well. It seems so up my alley, and everyone <laughs> knew it was up my alley. That I, I <laughs> sent you the trailer the second it premiered. And, <laughs> and I think two more people after that sent me it. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, you have it to is, see this. It is a perfect Jacob movie for sure. <laughs> a, a Viking revenge film. Yeah. Just like this huge right scope. Uh, I've heard some people compare it to Braveheart. So <gasps> I love Braveheart, I even though Mel Gibson is uh, Trash. problematic. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm super, super excited. I feel I've always said we, we have lost touch with our love for his, the historical <laughs> epic, the historical <laughs> revenge epic. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm very excited. Unrelated to that, I can update from last episode oh, yeah. that. I did indeed see Sonic 2 with my girlfriend uh, for her birthday. <laughs> and what did you think? Uh, great nap in the middle of it. <laughs> hey, me too. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, it was it was okay. Like I didn't even see the first one. Okay. Um, just wasn't up my my biggest experience with Sonic was like played one video game with a friend at his house. And it was like a for my memory it was like a fighting game. Yeah, like, I know yeah. the one. Um, but that was my only memory. I have zero attachment. Like she was having to tell me afterwards about like the other Sonic lore, uh-huh. and I was just like, "Okay, like, <laughs> like I love you, babe, but I do not care about Sonic." <laughs> I'm have to cut that those, out. <laughs> those words are a death sentence in our house. <laughs> and my roommate loves Sonic. I know he was so excited. He saw it for his birthday. Yeah, right? yeah, that's mm-hmm. where I. That's when I saw it. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I think. Like I said this last week, but um, I think it's cool that like, I mean I don't think they're amazing movies, but I do mm. like that they're like kind of doing a more cartoony blend of CG yeah. and real life, rather than like mm. trying to make him look real. Thank God. Yeah. <laughs> that, God, I was thinking about that during the movie. So I didn't see the first, but I remember that original design. Uh huh. And thinking about that in this movie, I was like watching two hours. Yeah. With. With that. It does make me wonder, though. I really wish I could have seen the, like, horrific mm-hmm. version of Tails and Knuckles. Oh, my God. <laughs> they had to have had, like, some concept on yeah. it somewhere. Release the... Release it. Release the original cut. <laughs> release the monstrous Tails. <laughs> um, but, yeah, like... um I will say I surprisingly liked the stuff with the humans more than I thought I would. Me like, too. It, there's that whole section in the middle... Uh, involving the wedding yes that i did not expect at all and the sonic and uh, sonic tails all that they're just gone yeah for like 10 minutes and it's all about uh sonic's i guess adoptive mom and her uh-huh. sister uh, 
Yeah. Did you enjoy the my favorite joke in the whole movie? It was the one with the priest opening the Bible. Yeah. And there was a, <laughs> I don't uh, don't want to give it away, but you're like, why do I care about any of this? But there's like mm-hmm. a, there's like one frame where uh, James Marsden's sister in law mm-hmm. is like kissing. I, I thought it was common, but it is not no. common. It's like bargain a bin guy. common. <laughs> yeah, he has really weird facial hair. Yeah, he's from. S- I think he's from like CSI Miami or Probably. something. Like I know him from somewhere. Um, but um, and I I grew up watching a lot of uh, procedurals for those of you playing along at home. <laughs> But um, there's a part where I think he, he like dips her and they kiss and an explosion yeah. goes off behind them and it's like this is so fun and or weird. Or she because she slides in on the golf cart that has the just married sign and then yeah. walks off it as it's still drifting in slow motion yeah. and crashes in the stage behind. So good. And because yeah, I was thinking like I was I was just wondering like what it'd be like to then direct something like that uh-huh. or direct a movie like this where. Because I guess in the first one you were working with James Marsden most of the time, and then you have a a monst a monstrous little little blue puppet that is then replaced <laughs> with CGI. Yeah. But because then like it's Sonic and Tails, so it's basically an animated movie at that point. Or I yeah. guess you're just kind of directing like the extras. Yeah. Or even just getting like plates to to fill in later. But then you get to something like that <laughs> where yeah. it's like, oh, we get to have fun. Yeah. Maybe that's why those scenes were like the team besides the, like, VFX team could mm-hmm. really shine. But, yeah, I, I did think about that a little bit, that there are so many parts where it's just the animated characters talking to each other on yeah. a live-action background. And sometimes with Jim Carrey. Yeah, and so I'm like, did they actually go record all of these clean plates, or mm-hmm. is that also CG? Because these days yeah. it's hard to tell sometimes, mm-hmm. especially with that newfangled volume. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, like, I think... The first half, I was not feeling the movie, but as it went along, like, the first half, I was like, oh, God, am I, I going to have to lie to my girlfriend about how much I like this movie? <laughs> I was just like, oh, sure, babe. It was good. <laughs> but I think by the second, by the time we got to the wedding stuff, and I think after that, like, I liked the the kind of dramatic stakes of it. Like, the, yeah. a- the action scenes, I also liked a lot more. I guess I liked the snowboarding scene uh-huh. pretty good, but I really liked, uh, like, Sonic and Knuckles, or Sonic and Knuckles have that giant fight. Yeah. Um, I think I was asleep scenes. during all this stuff. That part, well, that part was cool. I liked <laughs> that part. I, yeah, the end with Sonic and his powers. Did yeah. you see that part? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I actually, I turned to, right when it was about to happen, I turned. Can we just, were you just going to spoil Sonic? Is that fine? <laughs> does I mean, any, does anyone care? Okay, spoilers for Sonic for the yeah. next thirty seconds. Go ahead. When the I know a little bit about Sonic, and so when the when the emerald started swirling around mm-hmm. him, I turned to Blake and I was like, "Is he gonna?" And I did like the Super Saiyan pose, like, <laughs> and then Blake was like, "I think so." That's my roommate for those of you wondering. Mm-hmm. And uh, and then sure enough, he goes uh, Super Sonic. He and, does. I was like, "Why the." F- when the fuck did he become Goku? Yeah, yeah. I was like, okay, this is pretty cool. Mm-hmm. I like when he fought that giant robot. Yeah, that was cool. But yeah, Sonic 2. Yeah. Not made for me. There was a, oh, I didn't mention in the theater we saw it and we saw it in a Cinemark. And um, the two rows in front, because we, we were just in like normal like recliner seats. The two rows in front of us were D box seats. Oh. And so they, like, when it started and their seats started shaking, I could feel it in my seat. <laughs> and it made me really feel like an old man because I was like, oh, God, my back. Oh, wow. <laughs> so I could feel it. And then there was also one part, I think, during the, the snowboarding scene. Uh, me and my girlfriend both, like, felt like a drop of water on our heads. <laughs> and we think it was shot, like, <laughs> they have little sprinklers that shoot you Damn. in the in the D box seats and one. I've only ever done D box one time, and it was for John Wick, <laughs> <laughs> the <laughs> first one, the first one. And so I was like, all this stuff where he's like driving angry at the airport, mm-hmm. just like <clears throat> like falling out of my chair. But it was cool, no regrets. <laughs> and I love John Wick. That is a good movie. I would not have thought of that one because yeah. I keep wanting to try D box, but. I don't know. It has to be a movie that, like, I don't mind it hindering the experience because uh-huh. I've never done it. So I was like, then when we were in the theater, I was like, oh, Sonic, this would have been a good one because I don't give a shit what yeah. happens here. Yeah. Um, Sonic 3. Sonic 3, I'll be there. D-Box seats. I'll buy them <laughs> right now. But, yeah, so Sonic 2 and Hype for the Northmen. Yes. Co- 
coming up next episode. Very exciting. And we have a special, our uh, our reporter in the street, uh, <laughs> Jeff Sanger, my dad, <laughs> said that the ambulance movie, Ambulance, was a good time. Oh, good. <laughs> so, I heard good things about that. Yeah, so maybe I'll go see that. <laughs> <sighs> what a weekend. What a change, honestly. I know. We go from... We go from um, a weekend that has a horror movie and slapstick comedy to then this weekend all about rom-coms and mm. rom-droms. Yeah, for real. You'd think it was February 14th the way these movies are shaping You'd up. You'd really think it was, yeah. but no, it is April April 20th. Hey. April 20th, 2012. Now, Jacob, do you want to guess what number one was mm. April 20th? April 2012. 20th, 2012, number one was the Three Stooges holding over from last <laughs> week. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> what was number one? It was Think Like a Man. Really? Yeah, Think Like a Man, yes. We'll, we'll definitely have to talk about it, but it opened very well. Wow. Mm-hmm. Can you guess what number two is? Mm. You don't have to think that hard about it. Cabin in the Woods. It's not Cabin in the Woods. <laughs> Is it the lucky one? It is the lucky one. (laughs) Wow, one and two this week. One and two. The movies we're talking about are one and two. And then third place is number one from last weekend, which is uh, The Hunger Games. Right. And it's fifth weekend. Yeah. And then in fourth place is a new movie that we did not watch, the Disney nature documentary Chimpanzee. (laughs) Oh, good. For a second, I thought you were talking about Born to be Wild, about orangutans and elephants. I saw that one. (laughs) <laughs> um, and then we have the Three Stooges, uh, only falling about 40%, which is a pretty good hold. Yeah. Uh, and then Cabin in the Woods also fell about 40%. Those so two, they're just... They're neck and neck. Neo and Agent Smith, <laughs> <laughs> eternal enemies. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> All right, so the first movie, number one movie of the weekend. Yeah. Think Like a Man. Which first, let me let me just preface by saying, this movie, you know, it's a rom com, uh-huh. and it had you know probably a limited budget, open to thirty three million dollars. What was uh, the budget? The budget was, according to Box Office Mojo, twelve million. So wow! It opened to thirty three and ended up making ninety six. Good for them. And good enough to get a sequel. Yeah. That came about two years later. Yeah, which. Stay tuned in two oh, years. Yeah. We'll cover Think Like a Man Two T O O. Yeah, the I had heard, I had seen this title a lot. Uh-huh. I don't remember where. I think I remember when think when the sequel came out. I was very into. I was very obsessed with looking over like the release chart, and I was uh-huh. basically memorizing it. And I remember being on. I was on a trip somewhere and so I was out of town and I remember like checking the movies and I was like okay good the only new movie coming out this week is Think Like a Man 2 <laughs> I can miss it it'll be alright and then I was like oh but don't worry the weekend after I believe is Transformers Age of Extinction oh boy mm-hmm. that one is the one I have not even seen oh, God. Uh, all the way through so we'll <laughs> have a good time if we yeah. cover it <laughs> Um, but Jacob what is what's your history I, I I think I've probably heard the title Think Like a Man. Or do people just um, yell it at you on the street? <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm always walking around like uh, <laughs> just with my overtly feminine behavior. <laughs> um, You're but, just walking around like, I'm such a boy. <laughs> <laughs> think like a man. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I never took their uh, advice. Don't grow up, kids. Uh, <laughs> never land gr- forever. I don't want to grow up. I want to be a Toys R Us kid. <laughs> kid. <laughs> Toys R Us kid, kids are a dying breed. They're all they like are. 21 now. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Uh, the kids these days, I know. they're not even Toys R Us kids. Kids these days don't even want to. They'd rather go to iPads R Us. <laughs> kids these days don't even get excited about the new Star Wars Lego. They'd rather go to Minecraft R Us. <laughs> <laughs> they would rather play Cut the Rope iPad <laughs> Lite Edition. I don't think Cut the Rope's available on the App Store anymore. <laughs> they would rather play Clash of Clans, uh, Fortnite. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, yeah, I I like probably heard of this movie, and I think I'm getting it mixed up with another movie that came mm. out kind of recently, where like a man gets put in his mind gets put into a woman's body, and he like starts being her. 
that also might be Taraji P. Henson. Like, I are you like, thinking of what men won? Yes. I think I, you kept saying that title to me. That is a remake of a Mel Gibson movie from, I think, like 2000. Uh-huh. And it's which uh, it's called What Men... Or no, that one's called What Women Want. Yeah. And it's Mel Gibson, like... I don't know, hits his head or say he's a womanizer and then he like can hear every woman's thoughts. Oh um, yes, that's what and it is. And then they made a remake with Taraji P. Henson uh called What Men Want, and so it's yeah. gender flipped. Okay, that's what I'm thinking of. So this mm. isn't that movie. This is not that movie, <laughs> but it does have have uh Taraji. man in the title. Yeah. This movie so I didn't know anything about it going in. Mm-hmm. I didn't want to know anything about it. Mm-hmm. People kept trying to show me the trailer for the last week, and I said, no, <laughs> I won't watch it. <laughs> but, um, but, back up. Back up. But, um, Go Northman on your ass. Yeah. But um, it's it's like six rom-coms in one. It like, really is. At first. Oh, my God. I would say for the first, like, 20 minutes of this movie, I was like, oh, boy, what am I in for? Like, because they throw all these characters at you. And there's also, like, a, some interesting stylistic choices. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, my first thought, because, yeah, I knew nothing. Or I knew, like, oh, it's, I don't know. I assume from the poster that it was, like, an ensemble thing. Yeah. But then just, like, you open, and you open on an animated sequence yeah. of cavemen, hun- uh-huh. like, hunting. At, oh, there's a... An animated circumcision. Oh yeah, yeah. there but, is. But you go through that and it looks exactly like uh, Gendy Tartakovsky's. Yeah, uh, or I don't know how to pronounce his last name, but I think it's right. Gendy's uh, Primal. Yeah, have you seen that show? Yeah, it gave me amazing flashbacks to that. I know. But then it goes into just like hanging just out. guys hanging out. Yeah. Yeah, it was like weirdly beautifully animated too. Mm-hmm. It was like very. Full. I was like, they definitely put some money into this. Yeah. But yeah, it started with that, and then another like weird stylistic thing they did is just because I thought this would come in sooner is they started giving us like title cards oh, that yeah. were like so for context, there's like a group of like five guys that we follow, and then a group mm-hmm. of like five girls that we follow. Mm-hmm. Oh, and the women like they they're not the guys are all friends. The women like are kind of in some, pairs. Some of them are friends. Yeah. Um. But yeah, it's all just about them and their relationships. Yeah. But the big kind of key thing is all of the women. Have picked up and read, devoured. The, <laughs> <laughs> they have devoted their lives to the teachings of Steve Harvey and with his book, Act Like a Lady, Think Like a Man. Yeah. And this is a real book. Which I didn't know until yeah. we saw in the credits based on the book by Steve yeah. Harvey. It blew my mind. Yes. Which is such a weird adaptation. Yeah. Because it's basically just like, all right, let's put these principles on display. Yeah. Which is kind of a fun idea, actually. That like, mm-hmm. so, I guess someone read the book and was like, "You could really make a, a rom com out of this. Mm-hmm. You could make six rom coms yeah. out of this." It almost feels like if this came out today, it probably would be like a limited series, and you, and Maybe. they would spend more time on it. Mm-hmm. Like, It'd be an HBO Max series, yeah, because uh, they really put a lot in this movie. But mm-hmm. honestly, like, kudos, like it didn't feel like too much. I will mm-hmm. say though, for the first like twenty minutes, I was like. Who are these people? Why are they telling me any of this? Because they introduced them as, as the men. They introduced them as, like, the mama's boy, the yeah. player. Oh, I wrote down all the, the okay, types good. of men yeah. that are introduced. There is the player, uh-huh. the mama's boy. Good oh, archetype. Very specific. <laughs> the dreamer. <laughs> the non-committal. Yeah. We'll get into him. Yeah. Um, the happily married. And the even happier divorce. Wait, who was the happily married? The white guy. Oh, okay. I was like, because like, they don't focus on him at all. They do not focus on him at all. He is, yeah. he is, he's interesting because I was thinking of like, oh, there's usually like, you know, in a lot of movies, there's the cliche of like the black comedic sidekick. Uh-huh. But this one, there's just kind of the white comedic sidekick who is just shows up, says two very dumb things, and yeah. then disappears. Yeah. And at first, I really wasn't sure about this character because mm-hmm. I was like. We have, like, all these, like, black comedians. Mm. There, there's one other white guy. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and he's, like, he's actually from, uh, more entourage. of, like, the group. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. He's, like, more in – he's the uh, non-committer. Yeah. Uh, and he's, uh, he's like, more of the group. The other guy is just, like, there when they drink and yeah. stuff. He and plays like, basketball with them. He's yeah. the, I, I like it, though, because he just has no conflict. Yeah. Absolutely a great zero. Line. Yeah. At first, I w- some of the stuff he would say, I was like, oh, I don't know about this. But then I was like, well, I guess like all these black actors were okay with it, so yeah. it's not my place. And it's produced by it's you know produced by Steve Harvey. Okay. Um, 
and is directed by Tim Story. Do you know Tim Story? Uh-uh. Do you know Tim Story's career? No. He is an interesting guy. <laughs> let me let good me name for directing mm-hmm. Tim Story. Yeah, he has a very interesting career. Let's 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 flash back on him just real quick. <laughs> He's the directed machine. a lot, a lot of music videos. It looks like in the '90s, people are calling him the American Takashi Miike. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, this is so many music videos. Uh, music video, music video, music video. Oh, he directed the movie Barbershop. Oh yeah, with the uh, Ice Cube, I believe. Yeah, he directed Barbershop. Then he did the movie Taxi. I don't Starring, think I know that one. it's it's a it was a French film I think, and then it was remade with um, Jimmy Fallon and Queen Latifah. When did this come out? Two thousand? Two thousand four? Okay. Oh, the poster has uh, ladies in short skirts. <laughs> oh yeah, the, the golden age yeah. of movie posters. But yeah, he did that, and then he did Fantastic Four, <laughs> like the original. Yeah, the first one. Wow. With like. Uh, uh, with Chris Evans as yeah. Human Torch. Um, who's, but, a, who's a Miss Fantastic? Jessica Alba. Right, right. Mm-hmm. Which is kind of weird because she's kind of like white. Whitewashed? <laughs> she's kinda, well, because she is like, his, Jessica Alba is like Hispanic, I believe. Uh-huh. Um, and they kind of make her skin a little white. I think she wears like blue contacts oh, in there or something. It, that's it looks right. really una- It looks really weird. Yeah. But, um, yeah, he does Fantastic Four, Fantastic Four Two. Da- oh, he did one episode of CSI Miami. That's where uh, he met. <laughs> oh no, that was Sonic. That's not, <laughs> that guy wasn't even in this movie. <laughs> uh, then directed a Kevin Hart special, oh. uh, stand up special. That's where he uh, met Kevin Hart. <laughs> I mean, it's not impossible because then the next movie he does is Think Like a Man. Yeah, and then afterwards he does another Kevin Hart special. He does the, another Kevin Hart movie, Ride Along, with ah, Ice Cube. I remember that. Yeah. Um, and then Think Like a Man Two, spelled T O O. Yeah, good. You know. <laughs> good titling. <laughs> um, Ride Along to another Kevin Hart special. Um, the movie Shaft, that which is the third chat. Sha- it's a sequel to the Samuel L. Jackson Shaft. So the one that just came out. The yes, the recent one, like uh, 2019. I actually wanted to see that, but I heard it was bad, so yeah. I didn't. And then most recently did the Tom and Jerry movie. Wow. That's mm-hmm. weird. <laughs> it is, he is a, I don't know why, I'm kind of fascinated by him. He yeah. is a bizarre, I don't want to say bizarre career, but just like the inclusion of Fantastic Four and both yeah. Fantastic Four is in there is just a, a real out there choice, but yeah. he is interesting because he seems to have really struck a chord with a lot of, um, uh, you know, comedies led by primarily black casts. Yeah, because I mean, Barbershop, this, and Ride Along uh-huh. are all movies that you know have sequels. They made a lot of money, and I think that 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 is worth noting. Yeah, <laughs> is he a black guy? Yeah, he is. Okay, I was here's gonna say a, that's here's weird. A, here's a picture of him. <laughs> Okay. Mm-hmm. It'd be weird if the guy who behind all these yeah. was some like Melvin who's like, <laughs> if he was like uh, the married guy in this one. Yeah. Bennett. <laughs> yeah. I did look up that guy because I wanted to see what, what else he'd been in. And like the only things that like really came up were like he was in Ride Along. Cool. I think he's just like a friend of Tim's story. Yeah, yeah. Tim's story's like, I gotta put my boy Bennett in. This I got one. the Bennett. I got this killer part for you. <laughs> yeah, he really won me over towards the end of the movie. Like, he, there's a line that I can't remember exactly what it's about. So basically, the main thrust of this film is that all of our men who have all, who have their fl- the fatal flaws. <laughs> Me, they're very <laughs> specific fatal flaws. Yeah, me, all of our uh, enlightened women. Which I will say, like for a movie that has like a cast of like ten people, yeah. I feel like they did a pretty good job of like yeah. getting to know all the characters. Like I was like, they don't feel super like paper cutouts. Mm. There were, let's see, there were a couple that I would be like, uh, I don't really know this character very well. Like yeah. the one who, the woman who was with the non-committer. So she was. Yeah, she that. We're going to need to talk about that relationship. Yeah, maybe just because she was the most, like, normal. She was just like, I want this guy I've been with for nine years to marry me. And he was like, I won't do it. <laughs> and he was like, what, babe? Huh? Yeah. He was like, how about – he's how like, about I've, I... got, I've got lies. Best I can do. <laughs> Men. 
Uh, but yeah, should we should we run through all just all the couples? Yeah, in yeah, general? that might these, help. These are our 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 series of opposites that mm. they set up. Which yeah, you mentioned how there's like. There's like title screens at some points. Yeah. Which they have for like, I think like the first two relationships. Like there's one that's like the girl who wants a ring versus the guy who like won't commit. The, the guy who won't commit. But yeah. then the other ones, like, I mean, they could have set up with that. Yeah. I feel like there's a lot of things that they have in this movie that they like just kind of thought of and then didn't really like apply yeah. to everything. And like, the, the yeah. strangest thing about the like title things is that because I noted it like came out of nowhere because they already started showing us like one of the men interacting mm-hmm. with one of the women. Yeah. And then it goes the non committer versus the one who wants to be yeah. married. And I was like, why didn't you do that for the first yeah. couple? <laughs> like it was weird. Yeah. But yeah, I think in general, like I don't I liked the first twenty minutes a lot. I thought it was uh-huh. like to start off with uh Kevin Hart, because I mean he's been everything now, but this was kind of his yeah. first one of his first kind of big like breakout films. Uh-huh. Um because he's he, like a big part of it. Yeah, he's such a big part of it. Mm-hmm. And I felt like his narration was actually really funny. Yeah. I felt like oftentimes I think it's kind of the same problem as a lot of kind of comedic actors that fall into. But I think Kevin Hart, especially in some movies that don't know how to use him, can just be like, all right, Kevin Hart, like, scream. And he'll yeah. just start screaming about like, oh, my God, I can't believe this. I'm so short. <laughs> um but I think in this one, like, he's kind of, he acts more like a normal person, but yeah. just slightly heightened. And then kind of when you get near the end and he's calling his ex-wife uh-huh. and he's kind of screaming in the bathroom, <laughs> I, I think it works. Yeah, I actually really, I've never been, like, a huge Kevin Hart fan. I mm-hmm. think he's fine. I don't, like, hate him or anything. Mm-hmm. But um, I've never, like, watched any of his comedy. And, like, when he's in movies, I don't usually go, like, oh, I love Kevin Hart. Although I do like the two Jumanji movies mm-hmm. and he's in those. But in this, I really liked him. Like, I thought he was super funny. And uh, and when he, he's the narrator of the movie, when it first started though, because I I had just assumed this movie was gonna be more from the uh, female perspective, and so when the when it started, I was trying to figure out which of these leading ladies was narrating because his, <laughs> his voice is kind of high, and I was like, what? Who, who is that? Queen Latifah? She's oh not even God. in this movie. <laughs> like, um, It'd be like uh, Alec Baldwin narrating uh, Royal Tenenbaums. Yeah. But yeah, but he's he's super funny, and I honestly like I ended up laughing a lot in this, and I think mm-hmm. like to there's be, a lot of good jokes. Yeah, to be fair, I think like you know when we're watching these, I'm just like already in like a like all right, let's see what happens yeah. kind of mood. But I like really enjoyed this, and I and I ended up getting kind of invested in like the mm-hmm. relationships, especially. Well, let's 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 list out yeah, our so the so our series of opposites are yes. as, as you said during the movie foils, if you will. Yeah. Uh, so we have uh, the player. He's kind of the first guy we meet, uh-huh. and he starts seeing a girl who has specifically sets out a ninety day rule, mm-hmm. same as ninety day fiance, but a ninety day I rule. That too. Yeah, he cannot. They, she will not have sex with him for ninety days. Yeah. And five dates until he can even see her apartment. Mm-hmm. Which is, I mean, we're still in college, and, uh-huh. like, you know, I've been in a long-term relationship for a while, but, like, the idea of just, like, oh, yeah, meet a guy at a bar, go on a date, bring him into your home where he yeah. can then, you know, murder you. Yeah. Like, yeah, I it's don't... All, uh, yeah. It's all so confusing and stressful. I agree. Dating's a, a trap. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Um, but yes, yeah, so we have the mama's boy, uh, uh-huh. who's with the the girl with a son. The, the single mom. Yeah, yeah. I guess that's their opposites. Yeah, well, it's because she like wants someone who will put her and her son mm-hmm. first True. and but be a putting, father. But he's putting his mom first. Yeah. How dare he? He needs to dump that. I that know. <laughs> that um, old bag. Yeah. <laughs> but then we have uh, the. The dreamer. This is my favorite. Movie. Or I guess it's the person who's not successful versus a woman who is very successful. Yeah. A COO, I COO. believe, of a, of a major company mm-hmm. played by Taraji P. Henson. Yeah. And we know she's successful because she's always coming out of really big buildings. She is. And when she's in her apartment, she's on a treadmill <laughs> with a skyline in the background. Yeah. I was like, I will not settle for less. Yeah. Which honestly, like, I was like, facts. Like, she's making mm-hmm. some points. But- the mm-hmm. problem became she really liked this guy, and then mm-hmm. well we can get into it. But she so basically he sees her. He works at a restaurant because his new dream is to, he. This, the first girl we see him with leaves him because mm-hmm. he keeps changing his dream, 
And now his dream is to be a chef. So he's working as a line cook in this restaurant and sees across the stainless steel counter <laughs> Taraji P. Henson. And he's like, oh, my God. And her, all his friends are like, you'll never get her, man. You're a line cook. And then the boss comes over and goes, hey, valet swamped. We need you to park some cars. <laughs> Which I was like, would that ever happen? Like, Maybe. <laughs> like, I don't know. Because I worked in a restaurant. Uh, but I like we didn't we weren't fancy like we didn't yeah. have a valet like but the stuff I was asked to do was still like in keeping with my job it'd be like yeah. you know go get something from the basement take like, out the trash take out the trash yeah, you know? not not go drive these fancy cars yeah smelling of kitchen grease yeah so anyway and also I didn't realize this at the time right before he drives the car he's in like a white like chef outfit yeah. with like the little hat. Mm-hmm. And then when he drives it, I think he's in normal clothes. Otherwise, it would have ruined so. the whole thing. Maybe he had to change. Yeah. I assumed, like, oh, he just had to, like, you know, change out of the dirty chef clothes yeah. to, to do that. Because what happens is he pulls up in, like, the bins or whatever. Mm-hmm. It's this crazy, like, you know, wing door car. <laughs> and uh, uh, Taraji P. Henson sees him. Oh, and he's so dreamy. <laughs> so dreamy. And, the dreamer is dreamy. Yeah. And they're like, you know, flirting. And then he's like, oh, can I take you out to dinner? And she's like, okay. And so he's like, nice. There's also the part where he's like, or it's just like, oh, he doesn't know how to operate the car. Uh-huh. And he's like, oh, how do I roll down the window? And for some reason doesn't check the door. Yeah. Where the window. <laughs> he goes to the he's, center I guess console. he's never driven a car before. Yeah. And it's super dangerous to have him be the valet. Uh, so then he tells all of our other men, uh, he's like, oh, my gosh, like I, I met this amazing girl. And he's like, the problem is this, I feel like, is the most, like, classic setup for a rom-com. Yeah. The weird thing is. Because it that starts are, off with the lie. Yeah. Like, mm. Is that there are five other setups. Yeah. <laughs> but we spent, like, the first, like, 30 minutes, probably more than that, just setting up all of these couples. Yeah. And he's like. He's like, and so I, I really, his name is Dominic, the dreamer, mm-hmm. and I really like Played him. by Michael Ely, yeah. I believe. He's really, he's really interesting, like, his eyes. Yeah, he's piercing cool. eyes. Mm-hmm. Um, and I really like him because, in my opinion, he, like, messes up, obviously, because mm-hmm. everyone does in these movies, but, like, not he, in, he like, He does a, it for love. Yeah, and the whole time he has, like, her best interest in, mm-hmm. in, at heart, and, like, he's trying to be a good person. Everyone else in this movie <laughs> will get into it, but they're like, they're like, what if I trick my wife? What if I am horrible to yeah. her? And this guy's like, he even goes, I should, I need to tell her like, I'm a line cook. I was just driving the car, uh, because I was the valet. Mm-hmm. And, and then all the guys are like, "Don't you ever? You can never do yeah. that." And they're all like, "I'm pretty sure I don't. I might be misquoting here, but I'm pretty sure they're like." You lie until you have sex and then you leave. <laughs> or someone says you you tell the truth when she's in the third trimester. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, Dom's trying his best mm-hmm. and everyone is polluting his mind yeah. like Grima well, Worm Tongue. Well, so oh, there's there's one other kind of setup because I guess there's really there's four relationships yeah. I guess going on in this. Um, but then you have the happily married guy who's there. Uh-huh. Uh huh. We never see his wife. We by never the way. see his wife, which was. <laughs> The most obvious setup for a joke, for a great A joke of, yeah. like, oh, got to go home to the wife. And then at the end scene, she walks in and she's, like, you know, a supermodel. Yeah. It's like, oh, it's, that's the easiest joke for them to do. Uh-huh. I guess, like, uh, I was like, like uh, the other guys does that joke with uh, oh, right. Will Ferrell yeah. brings Mark Wahlberg home and his wife is... Who is it? I forget her name. She's in Hitch. What's her name? Eva Mendez. Yeah. Eva Mendez. Yeah. yeah. His wife is Eva Mendez and Mark Wahlberg is like, how? How <laughs> the hell did this happen? But then, then we have uh, Kevin Hart, who is he's the real comedic relief. He yeah. narrates the movie. He's yeah. the ringleader. I guess kind of the ringleader of him. Yeah. He's definitely like, it. to me, it almost feels like he was supposed to be a smaller part. Mm-hmm. And then they went, this guy is so funny. And it, like, it does feel like there's yeah. a lot of scenes where they're just like, all right, Kevin. Go yeah. on. Yeah, yeah. Because he's like, especially, we learn later why, oh but he, for most of it, he's just always at the player's apartment. Like yeah. the player who, I forget what his, Zeke. Zeke, yeah. Zeke will be like coming down the stairs and Kevin Hart's already there wearing like his robe yeah. and eating his breakfast. And then like two of the other guys show up and we're like, do they all, just, do they all, do they all live together? Yeah. <laughs> In like a frat house? And so we find out later that the reason he's there is because, I guess maybe you were supposed to put this together on your own, but it's mm-hmm. because he got kicked out of his house because he's being, he's getting a divorce. He's finalizing his divorce. Yeah, which I wife. assumed he had like moved out and everything, mm-hmm. um, but I guess he just doesn't have anywhere to go, so he's yeah. 
yeah. just always there. <laughs> or there are the ass factory that strip club he goes to. <laughs> yeah, I love how much he's mentioning that, like <laughs> the strip club. <laughs> but um, so then the last kind of main relationship that we're following is, in my opinion, the worst one. Yeah. And that's the one we mentioned about uh, the non-committal with the girl who wants a ring. Uh-huh. So to set up their relationship, they have been dating for nine years since college. Uh huh. It seems like because they set him up as oh he's non-committal, not really. His problem that the movie poses is that he acts like a child or yeah. that he's still like stuck in the past. Like his living room is completely filled with like action figures, uh-huh. and as he says, my anime posters. Yeah, there was not a single anime I poster agree. there. I was looking for him. I know, and he just had like a two towers poster. And this guy seems pretty cool. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he had that, and he has like a like a raggedy couch that he's had mm. for like you know ten years, and then the girlfriend is just like, you know what? I'm just gonna get rid of all this stuff. Yeah, <laughs> we're gonna you know we're adults now. We're gonna do all this, and it's like if your worldviews are so different in that point, just break up. Yeah, because if anything, like if he was non-committal, I do not think they would be living together. Uh-huh. For this long. Yeah. Like, I mean, that's a commitment to yeah. be in a relationship for nine years. Mm-hmm. I guess the, she's like, oh, why hasn't he popped the question? And then at one mm-hmm. point she goes, she looks around at all his toys and, and posters and goes, and also like he smokes weed a lot. Mm-hmm. And uh, and she goes, oh, that's why he hasn't asked yet. He hasn't gone through puberty. <laughs> but yeah, that's where I was at. I was like, you can find, I mean, <laughs> like I was like. There are women out there who also want mm. uh, movie posters in their living room. Yeah. Or so I've been told. <laughs> You'll find them. You'll find them. <laughs> Guys. Tell me know when you find them. You, you can DM the show on uh, Instagram. <laughs> I don't even know if we have an Instagram. We will. One we day. Will, will, uh, one day you can DM the show. There's a 50-50 chance I'll answer it. <laughs> um, and if I see it, I'm taking it. I'm taking it. <laughs> but um, when we first meet Chris, who's his girlfriend of nine mm-hmm. years, I thought they were trying to peg her as, like, the nerdy girl. Yeah, because she makes, like, a Lord of the Rings reference. Yeah, she goes, like, uh, oh, what does she say? She, oh, I wrote it down. Uh, it's like, oh, Frodo Baggins had it easier. Yeah, and I was like, this girl seems pretty cool. But what does that mean? What does that mean Frodo has it easier? Like, Because uh, he has to go to the land of Mordor where the shadows <laughs> lie. <laughs> what is she talking about, like, oh, his journey? Yeah. And, like, oh, I get, oh, I get it now. It's. They're both trying to get the ring. Oh. Mm, well, he's trying to now. destroy the ring. Well, yeah. Well, he gets the ring pretty easily, I would say. Yeah. So really, she should have said Sauron had it easier. <laughs> or just like Gollum had it yeah, easier. Yeah, yeah. Comparing herself to Gollum is funny. <laughs> but then, at first, I was like, okay. Oh, so she's a nerdy girl. Yeah, yeah, I was like, she's the nerd character. But then she goes, her other friend goes, what are you talking about? And she goes, Frodo, from The Hobbit? And I was like, you lost me. <laughs> <laughs> This movie's definitely, especially that storyline, it feels very, like, 2012. Because I feel like this year is when kind of nerd culture officially goes mainstream. Yeah. Especially with the Avengers, at, which we'll get to very soon. But this one is still like, oh, you're a nerd, so you're a virgin. Yeah. And so that that feels a little little product of its time. So I guess there were you don't deserve your that. beautiful girlfriend. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, grow the fuck up. Yeah, actually tell her to DM feature flash. Yeah. <laughs> There's also like other problems with that relationship where like mm-hmm. he, so as the movie goes on, the girls are, I feel, I feel bad calling them girls, the women. The women. Yes. The ladies. The ladies. <laughs> the act like a ladies, think like a man. <laughs> and so they, as they're learning to think like a man, because Steve Harvey, as the men say, is a traitor. <laughs> And, and gave them all their best maneuvers. <laughs> so the women are able to see through all of their games. Like, the, it has, you know, prescriptions for each of their problems. And for her, it says, like, you need to, like, require him to get to mm. marry you. And you need to, like, take things into your own hands and stuff. Mm. So that's why she gets rid of all his stuff. Which, like, I think she says she put in storage. So, like, it's not as yeah. bad as, like, she threw it in the dumpster. And then the weird part is, is that she goes, like, oh, I was thinking we could remodel. And he's, like, open to the idea. Yeah. But then he goes, <laughs> just do this without me, <laughs> which yeah. I thought was going to be a problem. Like, she's like, no, we're supposed to do this together. But then mm-hmm. she just goes, cool. Yeah. And does she's it. like, thank God. Yeah. I don't have to have him involved. Yeah. So she makes their home into what he calls a bed, bath, and beyond. Yeah. Um, <laughs> which is not wrong, because, I mean, like, I mean, talking here as a nerd, uh-huh. but also that guy's. 
the, the character is a dick. Yeah. <laughs> and an idiot. But, yeah. like, if I – I told my girlfriend about this, and she said, like, I would never do this. Yeah. Because, like, I mean, like, like, that's who they are at that point. Uh-huh. And also, like, I don't know, the idea of just, like, oh, we don't want to have things we like in the living room. We have to make that, you know – a space for nobody. <laughs> yeah, yeah. For guests to come in and say, oh, but plain people. <laughs> <laughs> like, my living room at home reflects my parents. It has mm-hmm. a big painting of Hawaii. And <laughs> <laughs> uh, what else does this have? A, a, like, cavalry saber from mm-hmm. when my dad retired the army. <laughs> so it's pretty bitchin'. <laughs> <laughs> Mine looks like a pottery barn. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, and my parents are very proud of that fact. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, and it's also, like, Part of the problem, too, is it's not, like, you can have nerdy stuff and Mm. have a nice room. Yeah. Like, because mine right now is a disaster. But usually (laughs) it looks nice. But, like, part of his problem, too, is that he had, like, a, you know, he's, like, spilling bong water and his couch (laughs) has got, like, holes in it. And, like, Mm. (laughs) it's, it's like, uh, so he also was just a messy boy. Yeah. So it seemed like, because the more I think about he's his problem is not, like, being noncommittal. It's not, like, I guess you said it, but it's not growing up. Uh-huh. It's not like because he's, he's kind of been doing the same job forever, which also we kept saying this throughout the whole movie. But like, what are the most of these people's jobs for we, real? We know the line cook, but like uh, most of them were just like, what are you doing? Yeah. At any point in your lives, because they're all just like, oh, man, what am I going to do about about Amanda? Yeah. Like, that's their full time job. Yeah. Most of the time we see them, they are talking about their girlfriends in a bar or playing ba- yeah. or while playing basketball at the Y. <laughs> Or the JCC or yeah, whatever. Yeah, a lot of play, playing <laughs> basketball at the Y. And uh, including a very strange scene oh, God. Where, uh, <laughs> where these two, like, seven-foot-tall guys come over and go, like, hey, uh, we want the court. And then I think Kevin Smith is mad about something. Kevin Smith? <laughs> <laughs> and then Kevin Hart. That would be great if one of Kevin Smith just showed up. He's one of the boys. They're like, who are we going to get to – Help on our basketball team. Mm-hmm. And he's like, I think I might be able to t- help Kevin Smith. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> but anyway, Kevin Hart's like upset about something. These guys come over and he's like, nah, we can take them. Like we can keep the court. We'll play them for it. And then all their friends come over and they're all like NBA and mm-hmm. WNBA players. And then Kevin Hart does a whole comedy routine riffing like with the, the friends like, we can take them. We can take them. Uh-huh. You think like, you know, because it goes on for a while. A so you while. think it's going to set up like, oh, a big funny Big funny basketball scene, uh-huh. and then it just cuts away. Yeah, and then we never hear about it until the credits. It's like a there's a couple like bloopers. Yeah, they or it's not even bloopers. It's just the scene. Yeah, it's so weird. It's like they definitely had the scene. They just were yeah. like, let's not use it. It did remind me of. Did you ever see? There's another Kevin Hart movie called The Wedding Ringer. It's him and Josh Gad. It sounds super familiar. I, I don't think I saw yeah, it. Yeah, that one is uh, Kevin Hart's, like, uh, he's a, a best man for hire. Right. For guys that um, they don't have a friend to have as a best uh, man, so they hire Kevin Hart, and Josh Gad hires him, and, like, he has to hire, like, a whole team of groomsmen, and then they somehow get into an argument with, like, the father-in-law, and then they're like, oh, yeah, time for the the traditional family touch football game. (laughs) And then there's, like, a whole, like, ten-minute sequence of all of them playing football, (laughs) like, in the mud, in the rain. (laughs) See, I I would have liked that. Mm -hmm. Um, This movie was, what, three and a half hours long? Oh, it did feel long. Because it is, like, it's at least four rom-coms in one. Yeah. Each one, most of which could have been, like, could have been their own movie, yeah. I'd say. I think that's part of why I was maybe most invested in Dom and mm-hmm. uh, Taraji P. Henson, mm-hmm. who's – what was her character's name? Hmm. It was Lauren. Right. Business lady. Yeah. I feel like the, the women were had harder to remember names because they were more normal. It's yeah. Like Chris, Lauren, and the guys were like, Zeke, <laughs> Dominic. <laughs> Bennett. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think I was most invested in their relationship because, like, I understood – because mm-hmm. I knew what they were doing. They weren't just, like, playing basketball all the time. I was <laughs> like, okay, she, like, runs a big business. He wants to be a chef. That's how they get to know each other. And that's what, like – even when she finds out, she still likes him because she goes, oh, he has potential. And, mm-hmm. like um, – or I guess maybe at that point she still thinks he's, like, a bigger chef than he is. Yeah. But I was like, okay, I get why they like each other. And so I can now be invested. With mm-hmm. some of the other ones, I was like – it works with Chris and um, Nerd. <laughs> uh, What's his name? Jeremy. Jeremy. 
because I think just because it tells us, okay, they've been together. I'm like, okay, fine. A lot of the other ones, like with Zeke and um, I know the actor's name is Megan Good, but what was mm. her? Maya. Maya. Because Chris Brown keeps getting it wrong. Oh, yeah, Cameo yeah. by Chris Brown. <laughs> that is that is the part that has aged the worst. Yeah. Because not only is it a Chris Brown cameo, it's a recurring cameo. Yeah. Because he shows up three times in the movie. Mm. And he keeps getting her name wrong, calling her like mm. Mallory and stuff. Yeah. And so it's like, ha ha ha, he's a jerk to women. And it's like, if only you knew. If only, if only, if only you knew. Yeah. So fuck Chris Brown. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll say it. Fuck Chris Brown. Yeah, this podcast hates Chris Brown, <laughs> but we love uh, Dominic and Lauren. <laughs> um, but yeah, like Zeke and Maya. There, her whole thing, you know, she's been screwed over by these players. Mm -hmm. Then, of course, the player comes in, mm -hmm. and he's like, "All I want is a piece of that ass." <laughs> and she's like, "No, no, no." She's like, "Cookie stays in the cookie jar until <laughs> a baby earns it." <laughs> uh, yeah, their their storyline, it, it, I thought it was good. Mm -hmm. Um. I thought there were some sweet moments, like she discovers, like, oh, he has a passion for music uh -huh. and all that. And, I, like, there's some scenes with that that are nice. Oh, and we do find out from, because he's not really wanting to talk that much to her about, like, personal stuff, because he just wants, he just wants to get it. He just wants to get that cookie. Yeah, yeah. And then, like, he finds out he plays music, he plays a song, and it's very much like a breakup song. Uh -huh. And she's like, oh, who was it? Yeah. And it's like, everything about her is on... Track number seven. Yeah, he. I left it all on the track. Yeah. So I thought that part was nice. I'm just yeah. like, oh, he's opening up finally to her. I did like, there were like a lot of moments where I would go like, I want to know about these characters. And then the movie, like it could read my mind, <laughs> would go, okay, here's this little factoid. And it would always, usually, I won't say mm. always, it would usually be something that like actually gave me a lot of insight. And I would go, oh, cool. Like with that yeah. moment, I was like, oh, that's why he's a player because he got mm. his heart broken really bad, um, which I was like, I like that. Um, and he's learning to, like the eagle said, to try and love again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and I also, uh, I think I also in rom-coms, I feel harder when I have a little boy crush yeah. on the character. And Maya was like, oh my God, I was smitten. Mm -hmm. I was like, she is so beautiful. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> and I think she was also in Stomp the Yard. And I thought the same thing then. <laughs> come, come, Consistency. Come sue me. <laughs> what are you up to these days, Megan Good? Um, but yeah, so in the plot, they these women, they're uh, the ladies. They are using the teachings of of the wise Steve Harvey, yes, the prophet, uh, <laughs> the traitor, <laughs> um, and, and they're getting what they want with the men. Uh, but then the men realize that these women. They've all been asking them the same questions, yes. and so then they find out about the book. They realize, oh, we can use this against them. Which then made it for a really weird part of the movie where they're like, aha, we're going to trick our women by doing exactly what they want. Yeah, that was weird. I feel like the only characters that it worked for were Jeremy and Dominic. Mm -hmm. Because with Jeremy, he legitimately did trick her because she was like, she keeps telling him like, oh, I want you to apply for this job. Yeah. Like it would be right up your alley. And so then he tells her, oh, I applied for the job. And mm -hmm. she's like, awesome. And then they like are having a good time. And then later she finds out that he never sent in the, mm -hmm. the application. So I'm like, okay, yeah, classic, like, rom-com thing. Yeah. But then there's stuff with, like, um, with Dominic where he – where it's like, oh, what do I do to, to win her over now that she knows, like, I'm not super successful? Uh -huh. <laughs> so like, oh, have a romantic dinner. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> what a game-changing strategy. <laughs> I guess I liked him because he wasn't trying to, like, trick her. He was mm -hmm. just like, I'm going to do what yeah, I do that's best. That's why he's the best one. Yeah, he was like, them. I'm going to cook her a really good meal. Mm -hmm. um, and she's like, damn, he's good. Yeah. Uh, but then she still – I actually felt like she was uh, – more of the is interesting actually. I don't. I think they probably did this on purpose. Mm -hmm. That in most of these relationships, it's the men who are like, kind of being the fuck mm -hmm. up. And then in that relationship, I really felt like it was Taraji P Henson. Yeah. Which is interesting because one of the first things they say about her is that she acts like a man. Mm -hmm. and yeah, that's because like oh my last boyfriend and is said you don't need a man in your relationship. You are a man. Yeah. And so, actually, yeah, they definitely did it on purpose yeah. because th I think her title card says the dreamer versus the woman who is her own man. <laughs> uh, 
And so, like, I don't know, that whole idea is kind of, like, sexist because mm-hmm. it's saying, like, oh, the, you know, she acts like a yeah. man because she does these things. But, like, I thought it was kind of an interesting twist on all the other mm-hmm. ones. Um, and honestly, there's a, po- a moment at the end where Dominic has learned his worth. She's, like, gone back to her, like, ex who sucks. And mm-hmm. Dominic's like, well, you know, he sh- I've learned from her that I can apply myself and, like, follow my dreams. Yeah. And so he, like, opens this food truck and it's bumping. Mm-hmm. And um, he's like Jon Favreau. Yeah. <laughs> God. Oh, just gave me beautiful flashbacks to the, the masterpiece <laughs> known as Chef. And, um, uh, and then Taraji P. Henson comes and she's like, I realized I was wrong. Like, I want you back. And for, like... I think like she does it like three times, and two yeah, out of the he three keeps times denying her. He's like, "Nah, beat it." And yeah. I was like, "I think he's really gonna like know. tell her to hit the streets." Um, but then they kiss and make up, mm. um, which and is everyone claps for them. Yeah, which is fine, and it was like sweet. But I f- I feel like it could have been kind of cool and ballsy if he actually was like, "No, like I'm better off now." Like yeah, um, <laughs> even though I, I did, mm-hmm. I do always like a happy ending. Yeah. This whole movie, it just, it just reminded me. I'm like, this is basically like one of those like Love Actually type movies where mm-hmm. it's all of the all the separate love stories that could be their own movie, but all together. Like, what what were those other ones that were like like uh, uh, Valentine's Day, New Year's Eve, like those ones? Yeah. That's like a mil a cast of of millions. Yeah, as, like, all these famous actors and all their separate little little love stories. Yeah. I've never seen any of those. Oh but yeah, it sounds good. <laughs> I've seen Love Actually, and I'm not a fan. Yeah, I've heard that it hasn't aged particularly well. It, yeah, the love stories in that one are bad. Yeah, <laughs> hey, uh, you know, I guess that's a controversial take, but yeah, this one at least felt like this one did feel like most of the the love stories on display could be their own movie. And Love Actually, if they were their own movie, they would all be the worst movie, ever, the worst <laughs> movie ever made. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I think an important part in, uh, 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 for me, I know a rom-com is working when I go, oh man, I wish I, I had someone to, <laughs> to have in the hold, uh, mm-hmm. which this movie actually did make me feel a couple times. Mm-hmm. Like I, I think like a big moment in rom-coms is obviously the like, I was wrong. Like I want to mm-hmm. be with you moment. And in this movie there were like four of oh, them. Oh yeah. Because all the time, every single one. Yeah. Cuz of course there were like four low points because mm-hmm. they all had to like fall out of love and then the guys or Taraji P Henson had to be like, "Wait, I was wrong." and mm-hmm. and run back to them through the crowded airport. There at the end the kind of low point did lead to the my favorite moment of the movie, which was when they're all at the bar. And they're all so sad, and Kevin Hart's like, "Come on, guys, I'm finally divorced. Like, yeah, I, well, let's go, let's go to the bar, let's go to the strip club, let's meet some ladies. You're all free." And then they're all so sad, and like the, the happily married guy is like, "No, I love my wife. I'm gonna go home. To, I gotta go home to her. I gotta cook dinner." Yeah. And then Kevin Hart goes to the bathroom and call <laughs> calls his wife a surprise <laughs> Wendy Williams cameo. Yeah. And then just like pleads to take him back. Yeah. Uh, he says one line, he's like, I'm around I'm around these men and shit. <laughs> like, I just want to be cuddled. Yeah. It honestly like it was definitely like supposed to be funny and it was. Mm. But it honestly was kind of sweet too. It yeah. reminded me of that um have you seen the I think you should leave sketch with the I don't think so. There's a sketch, everyone should go watch the show, it's awesome <laughs> on Netflix. But um, there's a sketch where this guy it starts with all these guys playing poker <laughs> and uh one of them's like, uh, like, ah, oh, this is so nice. I had to get away from my wife. And then the main character, who is um, that really dumb KKK guy from Black Klansman, uh, he was also in that movie. Oh, uh, uh, I'm forgetting his name. Richard Jewell. Yes. Mm. And um, and he goes, uh, he goes to get another beer, and they're like, mm-hmm. wow, you're really pounding those down. And he goes, hey, you would too if you have my wife. <laughs> and then uh, <laughs> and then he has this whole beautiful flashback. Of, of their life together. Like, it's really specific and weird about how she, like, helped him when he was feuding with this guy in his, like, uh, regional theater production. <laughs> and then it comes back to him and he goes, no, I don't know why I said that. I love my wife. <laughs> and that's what it reminded me of. That's like, that he was like, I have to go to her. Yeah. Um, I need her now. <laughs> yeah, which there was a really good one of those jokes in um, in this movie where Kevin Hart, calls her and he's like okay I'll be there in 25 minutes and then this guy comes out of the stall and is <laughs> yeah. like go to her 
go get Gail. <laughs> and then he slaps him on the back, doesn't wash his hands, and leaves the bathroom. Yeah. And Kevin Hart's like, did he wipe shit on my bed? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I guess one la- the kind of the last thing to just wrap up this movie is Steve Harvey in general. Yes. What a what a strange guy. <laughs> I mean, since, since this movie came out, he had the whole, you know, oh, I have made a mistake. I when he announced uh, Miss uh, Miss Universe. Oh yeah. As he accidentally announced the runner up as Miss Universe. I forgot about that whole the, thing. The the pre Moonlight scandal. Yeah. Uh, uh, the wickedly talented Adele <laughs> Dazeem. Um. But yeah, it is interesting that you can tell this movie's produced by him because he is treated like a prophet. <laughs> yeah, it's so funny. It's like there's a lot of clips of him on TV, which I think are real. Where I assume he filmed them for this movie. Yeah, uh, I wasn't sure because I feel like I've seen him give like relationship advice yeah. on shows before. But like it'll be all these women standing up in the audience and be like, my husband sucks. He uh, he eats poo-poo and stinks. <laughs> and then Steve Harvey says something like, well, do you feed him poo-poo? <laughs> and everyone's like, yes! yes! <laughs> and, and, you, and then they cut to like the women, uh, the female characters sitting there like, Huh. Yeah. I, I guess I do feed them poo-poo. <laughs> <laughs> but it is because I know, like, I saw a video on YouTube that was talking about Steve Harvey recently. And especially because I think after a lot of his shows, he does basically, like, a sermon to, like, the <laughs> the studio audience. I have more of a TED Talk, I guess. Yeah. But he has said some things in the past that I guess – some kind of sound like things that would be in a in a book like yeah. this, but then other things sound very like, if your man wants to have sex, you should not deny him. Mm. Okay, Steve. Like, yeah. <laughs> so it is a little uh, a little questionable his uh, his yeah. expertise on all of this. I actually, for me, the million dollar question during most of this movie, I couldn't tell because sometimes I would be like. I was like, okay, this is kind of like a, from the women's point of view. And then the men would be like, ah, they're against us. Yeah. Like, so I was like, it's war. I know. So I was like, I was like, was this written by a man or a woman? I can't <laughs> tell. And then, lo and behold, written by two men. Oh, my God. <laughs> men <laughs> squared. Yeah. Uh, it takes two men to accurately <laughs> portray a woman on screen. <laughs> portray like five women. Yeah. I like and you know if for being written by two men and based off a Steve Harvey book there wasn't too many terrible like mm-hmm. moments there was definitely a lot of like ah you know my girl kind of stuff yeah. but it, there was, it was like genuinely sweet at the end and mm-hmm. like when they professed their love I was like I be, I believe it except for my least favorite one and I liked them throughout but at the end when the mama's boy oh, professes yeah. I just felt like it oh, we was weird we, we barely talked about him that is he's so weird yeah it's Uncomfortable. You compared him to Norma Desmond while we were watching. <laughs> the Norman compared Bates. To, compared his mom to that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, she's like, honey, you need to drive me to my bridge game. Yeah. <laughs> For real. Yeah, he's like a Will, if William Holden in, in Sunset Boulevard was Norma Desmond's son. Yeah. And he's trapped in that house. And definitely having sex with her. Because <laughs> they say like, oh, like my dad left. Did you say his dad left or his dad died? I think he's dead. Died. Yeah, but my dad died, so I, I had to be the man of the house. Yeah. I had to, you know, step up and get in her bed. <laughs> <laughs> There's also some weird stuff about that because, like, uh, it seems like, you know, that's a conversation you would have with your significant yeah. other and be like, I'm really close to my mom. It's not weird. Like, I'm dead, but don't worry. Like, you know, you're a priority mm-hmm. in my life. But it seemed like she wanted him to be like, like, I am the only thing in your life. Yeah. Reject her. Like, <laughs> and because then, like, because she goes to visit, which also they never really explain why, but the mom just like sees her and is immediately like, like, just like it says her name wrong, uh-huh. and is, like treating her like shit. Like, yeah. they never really explain that. I think it's just supposed to be because she's like, oh, no one's good enough for my son. I like, guess so. I, she, I feel like she wouldn't like anyone he brings home. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just then. Oy, oy. <laughs> I'm just thinking about it. <laughs> uh, well, because then when he, they start, like, when they get the book and he starts, like, playing her. So then he it just lies. He just lies to the girlfriend about spending time with his mom. Yeah, he changes her uh, contact to work in his phone. I was like, oh, work's always calling. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And he goes, it don't matter. Like, we can. He's like, I'm going to drive you to the beach anyway. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's uh. like, little did they know, he was ignoring his mom. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just then 
that whole relationship is so weird because that's definitely like him and the nerd, I guess, need to grow up. Yeah. Technically in the movie. Yeah. And, uh, but I will say, I, I thought it was wholesome that, uh, she's like, I can't find someone who, like, will care about my son. And she's like, I don't want to waste six months with a guy and then feel like he's ready to meet my son and mm-hmm. then he's not about it. Um, and uh, so anyway, she brings him like on like the second date or something, a mm-hmm. first date to see her son and they hit it off and he's like really good with her kid. And I was like, that's nice. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and that was another moment where I was like, oh, that's like a good character thing is that, mm-hmm. um, you know, he's in love with her, a, a single mom. And we find out he was raised by a single mom. It's like, yeah. oh, so he understands. So I was like, that's really cool. All the weirdness aside. Yeah. Um, and I, there's also a good moment. The son's name is Duke. And because why not? And um, and there's a good part where um, her, his mom is like, I have a date tonight. And he goes, with a man or a woman? And she's like, a man? What kind of question is that? And he says, grandma says she wonders. And he goes, you know, I don't care either way. And, I, and so I wrote, Duke won't kill. <laughs> God, yeah. I mean, both movies we watched today are... Adaptations of books that feature a single mom that has a very sassy kid. <laughs> oh, yeah. Is that a, our segue into uh, The Lucky One starring Zac so. Efron? I guess and- to, to close out this one, I mean, what do you? how do you think it's held up? How do you think? I would say, like, on the old ones, like, has your opinion changed? But, like, on this one, like, did it meet your expectations? Or It was, it exceeded my expectations, mm-hmm. I will say. Because I definitely went in expecting not much Mm -hmm. and for the first like 20 minutes i was kind of like i don't know about Mm -hmm. this this is just like a bunch of like goofy people yeah but as we spent more time with them i was like no like i'm having a good Mm -hmm. time laughing i'm feeling for the relationship so like for me it worked as a rom-com and like i said it made me uh uh go man i wish i had a a ceo a (laughs) coo girlfriend (laughs) um but yeah, I really liked it, and I I don't watch a lot of rom coms, not because I'm against them, mm-hmm. I just like haven't. But I mean, this is not a uh, hot take, but When Harry Met Sally, one of the best. Oh movies. yeah, that's, that's one of the best movies ever. Yeah, and that's how I, I it's not fair perhaps to these movies, but that's what I compare it, the every rom com to, and uh, this is definitely no When Harry Met Sally, but it had some sweet moments, yeah, and some funny moments, uh, many funny moments, I will say. What did you think, Colin? Yeah, I definitely. I mean, I'd heard this title for a long time, and I had zero idea what happened in it, and it did, it exceeded my expectations. Mm-hmm. I guess it's not glowing praise, but it was a it was a good rom com, you know. I I think it was maybe a little little too long, but yeah, I feel like you know, I it's a good time, you know, it was especially like you know, if if your girlfriend's into like that sort of these sort of movies, like it's not. It's a solid watch. There's enough funny stuff mm-hmm. and some some genuinely sweet moments. Uh, you know, we are as a you know two two straight men talking <laughs> about this movie. It is worth saying that just like you know we're not the target audience specifically <laughs> for this one. Two straight white men yeah. for, for this movie with a primarily black cast, but it does it has some really funny moments and I think works pretty well overall. Yeah, I don't know if I ever need to see it again, but I am curious to see. Think like a man too. If yeah, we make it. I think that's, that one they go to Vegas. Ooh, <laughs> that's what I was uh, thinking because after we saw Three Stooges, which I hadn't seen in you know mm-hmm. ten years, and I was like, "This is awesome." <laughs> I was like, legitimately considering going on Amazon and trying to find the <laughs> Blu-ray, and I didn't feel like I needed to own Think Like a Man, but <laughs> I did enjoy it. Yeah, and I think also it's worth saying that um, I feel like it's always kind of treated like a surprise when a lot of these kind of comedies that start kind of an ensemble primarily black cast like do really well like this one did like open number one i think it may be number one like the second weekend as well because mm-hmm. uh, like you know i remember like it was like the best man best man holiday barbershop there's been three barbershops i think and i think it's worth saying of just like you know these movies they have their audience and they do and even like most recent or i don't know if it's most recently but like girls trip yeah, um, that I remember that being like a big surprise for a lot of people, and it's like there, there's an audience for these movies, yeah. that, and you know they shouldn't be should not be forgotten. Yeah, I saw Girls Trip in theaters with mm. uh, all of my guy friends, <laughs> and uh, and we had a great time. <laughs> um, and that's what I'll say is like I feel like it's a it's a genre that gets shortchanged a lot, mm-hmm. like because and. My our dear friend Oriana is mm-hmm. a huge uh, rom com fan, mm-hmm. and she has a whole list of like good ones, <laughs> and she's always saying like that 
they they've been on the on the downhill Definitely. since they're all on Netflix now. They're all Netflix originals. Yeah, and she's like the glory days was like the early two thousands mm-hmm. and like nineties. Um and so I think w- with these two movies we're kind of I think we'll talk about the lucky one. But like yeah. I was like this was like a good rom com and, and yeah. but I can't think of the last rom com that came out that was like a big deal. Yeah, I mean maybe um yeah, definitely not in theaters. I have no idea. Yeah. Palm Springs was really good, but that's yeah, also that, like a sci fi yeah. movie. It's got sci fi elements. It was on Hulu. Yeah. Yeah. I can, the only ones I can think of are like Netflix ones. Like there was Always Be My Maybe. Yeah. Which was good. There was that movie Set It Up. But yeah, like these kind of movies, they, they seem to really be going to streaming now. Because even yeah. like there was a, that movie Marry Me. Did you hear about that one that came out? It came out like yeah. on Valentine's Day. Uh-huh. It was uh, Owen Will- Owen Wilson and Jennifer Lopez. What a pairing! I know, and uh, but like that did not do did not do great. And I heard like okay things about it. I like the premise. Um, but yeah, just like it seems like things movies like this just go straight to streaming. So it definitely yeah. shows that things have changed. Which is a bummer because like as a uh, uh, a straight white man yeah. who likes. Rambo and <laughs> Star Wars. I really do like going going to see, you know, all kinds mm-hmm. of things. And so it's like I would like to see more of these in theaters. Mm. Like I feel like the only movies that kind of fit this now. Well, there was one I thought was going to be rom com and was more of a rom drum, mm-hmm. which was uh, Gloria Bell with oh uh, yeah, what's her name? J- Julianne Moore. Yeah, um, which I was excited for because I really like John Turturro, and mm-hmm. I was like, uh, this is going to be a great like. You know, finding yourself movie when mm-hmm. you're old, which is an interesting subgenre. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it was pretty good, but yeah, so very, very interesting film. I'd say a uh, soft recommendation for me if you're if you're wanting to, to check it out. Yeah, I'll say if you want to see a rom com that you probably haven't seen before, check it out. Yeah, and get, learn from the immor- immortal words of Steve Harvey. Yeah. So now, as mentioned, we go to our second movie yes. of the evening. We, we've, you know, we we flashed back. We're at, we're at the movies. We finished our first feature. And we're walking. We're not paying for a second ticket. We're running and <laughs> sneaking <laughs> into the other theater for the second movie. Mm-hmm. And it is the lucky one, the Zac Efron Taylor Schilling, based on a Nicholas Sparks novel mm-hmm. from that whole that whole genre yeah. of movies. Is do you know Taylor Schilling? Because I feel like I have never seen her before. I I learned the name when uh, when <laughs> looking at the poster for this movie. Okay, because I think I looked I looked her up and I yeah she has not been in a ton more. I think she did a bunch of TV maybe. Yeah, I mean she was pretty good in this. Like so, <laughs> why don't you break them off a piece of what the lucky one is about? <laughs> the lucky one. All right, so we start. Iraq. <laughs> I know where every uh, romantic film about America begins. Yeah, uh, starting Iraq. We have uh, Zac Efron. He's in the midst of battle mm-hmm. on a raid on uh, Al Qaeda. I guess. Yeah. We kept joking that he was in the raid on Osama bin Laden. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which also because this is the same year Zero Dark Thirty came out. Oh. And so similarities there. Yeah, I know. It really felt like. I mean, it changes pretty quickly because they run into another American platoon and it becomes Mm -hmm. a whole thing. But at first, it really felt like they were going into the compound. I was like, they're going to get him. (laughs) They're going to get him. Get him, Zac Efron. Get him. (laughs) Or it's a romance between Zac Efron and Osama Bin Laden. (laughs) Talk about uh, uh, opposites attracting. (laughs) One is Uh, a handsome, just blue-eyed beauty, and the other one is Zac Efron. (laughs) Oh, God. (laughs) Uh, but yeah, so they go there. Uh, a bunch of soldiers die, but they take the place. And then in the next day, Zac Efron, or it's in the morning, and Zac Efron's uh, walking around. He looks, and in the rubble, he finds a picture uh-huh. of our may our lead, May Taylor Schilling, mm-hmm. and it's a picture of her with a lighthouse in the distance. And he looks at the picture, and then a missile strikes right behind him, where he would have been standing if he hadn't gone and looked at the picture. And then we get in quick succession other scenarios in which he was close to dying, uh-huh. but he had his the picture as his lucky charm. Yeah, including a part where he's in a Humvee driving in the desert, and 
and then they get ambushed, and it goes to slow motion of bullets ripping through their Dasani yeah, <laughs> bottle the, of water. Yeah, the most bizarre product placement of a, Desa- a Dasani water bottle in perfect focus being blown up by a by a terrorist <laughs> <laughs> machine gun round. <laughs> um, but yeah, so Zac Efron uh, goes home. He goes to his, his sister's place, who I guess is watching his dog. Yeah. What was his dog's name? Uh, Zeus. Zeus, yes. He goes there, and he's clearly suffering from post-traumatic stress. Yeah. Um, she, like his sister, he has two nephews. And survivor's guilt. He definitely does. He has survivor's guilt, and he has two nephews who there who, like, they're playing, uh, they look like they're playing, like, World of Warcraft, but there's, like, yeah. gun sound effects in it. Yeah. And he hears that, and he's, like, jumping at that, and he's very, like, he's, you know, not mentally well, and so then he decides that he needs to find this girl in the picture, yeah. and then he leaves, like, a video message for his sister. We never see her again, so... Yeah, that's weird. Yeah. I didn't even think about that. He just, like, bails and walks yeah. all the way to Louisiana yeah, from Colorado. He, he walks to Louisiana from Colorado with his dog, with uh-huh. his German Shepherd, and then the title comes up. <laughs> yeah, it's so strange, because I kept being like, what kind of movie is this? I was mm-hmm. like, it's a war film. And then I was like, oh, it's a PTSD movie. And then it was like, it's a road trip movie? Yeah. And then the title drops, and it says, <laughs> like, you know, Zac Efron in. And I was like, what the hell? Yeah. Like, um, Also, I feel like it's worth mentioning, in the Humvee scene, uh, his friend Victor is in, like, the gunner seat. And it's, like, the most telegraphed death yeah. in a war movie ever. It's like, man, I wish I had a lucky charm like that. Yeah. And he's like, he's like, you got to find her when you get home. And then he, like, dies. Like, I can't. He's basically, <laughs> like, gunned down. Yeah. It's basically, he's like, man, can you imagine how awesome it's going to be when we go home? <laughs> man, I only got one day left to retire. <laughs> yeah. I was like, this guy is so dead. Mm-hmm. Um, and then... When he's staying with his cu- his nephews, they like have a camcorder, and they're like, one of them goes, "He's gonna go viral or something like that. He's gonna go on YouTube." And they sneak into his room while he's sleeping, and like the other one like pounces on I think, him. Yeah, it's supposed to be like a birthday surprise. Or yeah, something. it's like a funny prank. And then <laughs> Zac Efron goes into like marine mode and like flips him over, and puts him in a chokehold. Yeah, and then obviously everyone is scared and he feels really bad. But it was just like, this is great. Because also, I feel like this is a pretty young Zac Efron. Yeah, this is like not long. This is two years, I think, after High School Musical 3. Yeah. And I feel like he's like put on a lot of muscle and now mm-hmm. is like this like leading man. And I was like, mm-hmm. this is kind of weird. Especially because later when he meets Beth Green, who is mm-hmm. Taylor Schilling, our lucky angel. <laughs> I feel like they. She feels older than him. Yeah, she looks a little bit. I guess also because like Zac Efron still is kind of like a baby face a little uh-huh. bit. I feel like he's grown out of that now. For sure. But his face just always like looked very like soft. Yeah, and he he has a little very, stubble very in this. Very dreamy eyes. <laughs> yeah, he's a real Dominic, yeah. the dreamer. <laughs> uh, I guess we d- I, we did ask it up top, but what. What's your history with this movie? This is just like the other one. I had no idea what it was. <laughs> and I uh, found out as I went along. Yeah. And so you were really like, you thought this was a war movie. Well, and then- I knew it was it was romantic. But like when it started in mm-hmm. like Afghanistan or whatever, yeah. uh, I was like, I was like, what is going on? I was mm-hmm. like, is this going to be like a, I started to think it was going to be about like, um, he had to go back to tell her, her, uh, yeah. husband died and then he was gonna fall in love with her which I was like this is gonna be weird if he's like yeah. taking a dead man's husband or wife like uh, the last samurai yeah. <laughs> that's not what happened yeah. but I was really like I was like I, I thought it was just gonna be like two people in you know Midwest America mm-hmm. falling in love and so I was yeah it was it was a lot going on yeah but I I remember when this movie came out because I remember it was a big deal like oh Zac Efron he's because this movie definitely appeals to like his audience from mm-hmm. High School Musical. And this feels like a logical step up from, or a lot, not a step up, but a, a lateral move. Yeah. <laughs> at least. Cause uh, it's, you know, it's a romantic dramedy that, you know, all the preteen in girls can get their mom to take them to see, uh, or maybe take a boy and then Ooh. kiss in the theater. But, uh, sussy. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I remember seeing the poster a lot. And I remember, I remember seeing the trailer, at least part of it a lot. I remember just specifically seeing like the main premise of like, he's in, I, he's in Iraq. He sees the picture explosion and then he sees her. Yeah. And I remember, I think I also saw the poster a lot because 
they did the thing where when they like when the movie adaptation of a book comes out and then they yeah. print the book with the cover of that. Uh-huh. And I have a thing of like every year for Christmas, because uh, I'm always bad at getting like my mom and sister presents. So I go to I go to the lovely used bookstore, Half Price Books, uh-huh. and I walk through just like their fiction aisle and just try and find them. Like I get them like two books each, and I occasionally end up in the Nicholas Sparks section, and there's <laughs> always copies of the Lucky One. Yeah. Yeah, I do feel like I've seen the poster before. Mm-hmm. Uh, it feels like an iconic 2012 yeah. poster with them, like uh, their heads together and like the mm-hmm. sun behind them. Oh yeah, and the other. I feel like I could see this working better as a book than as a mm-hmm. movie because I can like definitely see that, especially yeah. like a romance novel. Yeah, like the premise is not bad, and mm-hmm. it's not a bad movie. It's just like I felt like whereas. Uh, the, Think Like a Man was, like, making me laugh and mm-hmm. getting me to care about the relationship. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just pulled up a picture of um, <laughs> it's all these Nicholas Spark adaptations and all their posters are couples holding each other's faces, like, in the moment before in Embrace. Yeah. Yeah, there's The Lucky One. There's Dear John. There's The Last Song, which that one has Miley Cyrus. Ah. It's another Disney one. Safe Haven. Uh, which I think is Naomi Watts, possibly. Uh, there's another one uh, called The Best of Me with James Marsden, Sonic's wow. very own. But yeah, that just shows the... They were cranking these movies out. Oh, yeah. There was a, a cottage industry. <laughs> trying to make another notebook. They really were. Which I still have not seen, actually. I have not seen The Notebook either. That's another one where I, I saw someone watching it on a plane next to me, <laughs> and I saw, like, I think I saw... I haven't looked into this, but I think I saw Ryan Gosling in, like, 40s clothes. And I was like, <laughs> is this a period piece? What the yeah, hell? Like, <laughs> isn't that one? I think it's structured like it's them as old people, like, remembering it mm. or something like that. I haven't, I haven't yeah. seen it. We or, should also, again, preface that, you know, two straight white guys <laughs> here talking about this this rom-com. Yeah. It's, not, it's not a rom-com. It's a rom drum. Yeah. I, I noticed that uh, I think um, – whatever service we watch. Oh, we watched it on Netflix. Yeah. By the way, April 30th, your last chance to watch it <laughs> oh on Netflix yeah. America. Thank God we got it in in time. <laughs> but uh, I think I think the genre it put it in first was drama, mm-hmm. um, which is fitting. But yeah, I, w- there's like, a, as the movie was coming together and I was realizing what it was going to be, and he goes to meet Beth Green and she works at a like a dog hotel <laughs> yeah. kennel. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is the most like, Rom, mm-hmm. drum, uh, mm-hmm. like set up that he's like he's gonna meet this girl. He's gonna like work hard on mm-hmm. on work her hard land. Take care of some dogs. Yeah, and it's like he's gonna be saved by some dogs and by a good woman. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, I feel like how did you feel about Zac Efron as a leading man? It was interesting because he definitely feels very. I like Zac Efron a lot now. Uh-huh. I think he's done a lot to get past like his kind of the Disney curse, if uh-huh. you will. Or, like I guess he wasn't a child actor, but like the curse of being like you know a Disney Channel star. Yeah. Um, My favorite Disney curse is the curse of the Black Pearl. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so I just derailed that whole conversation. <laughs> um, but yeah, I like Zac Efron a lot, and I was at the start of this movie. I was like, he's really wooden in this one. But then I don't know. It kind of, I kind of bought into it because it did kind of feel like he was going, he was trying to match like how a marine usually is or how a veteran is, specifically with PTSD. Of just like he doesn't show a lot of emotion. Like you know, in the Marine Corps, he's had that beaten out of him. Yeah. Um. So I thought he was okay. I'm glad he's gotten better. Yeah. That's pretty much how I felt. I was like, he is pretty like uh, cardboard, like mm-hmm. you know, and but he's pretty pretty muscular man to put on the poster. Uh huh. And I was like, I really hope he like starts to open up, and he did. Like especially mm-hmm. with um, the son, mm-hmm. just like our friend the mama's boy. <laughs> um, and I really liked their relationship. Like that mm-hmm. he the son is like this kind of like prodigy who's really <laughs> good at violin and chess. And mm. does magic tricks. Oh, so you're a nerd, you mean? Yeah. This is the kind of guy that's girlfriend of nine years is going <laughs> to leave him. <laughs> but, um, and he's going to complain about his anime poster. But, uh, like, I feel like, he, you know, he gets kind of bullied and he has this. Uh, so 
Beth Green's husband wasn't killed in war. It was her brother. Yes. Um, and her ex-husband is the town sheriff, and he's a real piece of work. Oh, yeah. Keith. Keith. They could not make him worse. Yeah, he's so unlikable mm-hmm. to the point that I actually realized about halfway through that I was like, wait a minute. Keith is actually my favorite character because he's the one that's making me feel something. <laughs> like every time he comes on screen, I go, is, fuck you, Keith. <laughs> it is true because like – the relationship is fairly, it's fairly stale. Yeah. This whole movie feels very, st- it feels like, like a Hallmark movie. Yeah. Like, like a Folgers commercial. Yes. Um, like, my, my mother's favorite channel, the Hallmark channel. <laughs> um, it feels like it's shot a lot like, like those kind of ads. Yeah. It's just like, you know, it's in a location that's like, you know, pretty because it's, it's a Louisiana. Uh huh. And the whole movie feels just very safe. Yeah. I will say it was like, like there were there were a lot of times in like you know the forest and on, on, on the river, and uh, there was like beautiful sun, everything was at sunset, and um, and so like the trees mm-hmm. are all tinged in orange, and I was like it looks really nice, and I realized that like both of these movies for being like romantic movies I guess were very like brightly lit and colored, yeah, but with like the luck or the the. The thing, what is it? Think like a man. Think like a man. <laughs> the, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, think like a man. <laughs> I was gonna say the thing men like. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, in that one, it felt more like I was like, oh, it's lit like a uh, Judd Apatow movie or something. Yeah, like, it's, it's like, very, yeah, very. Everything's even. Yeah, it's like mm-hmm. this is a comedy, and then this movie was very much like. A you know, like you were saying, like a a uh, Claritin commercial. <laughs> um, it feels like there's I don't know how many scenes where it feels like the part of the commercial where they're just like the people are just kind of like walking their dog and yeah. talk, laughing with some people, and it's like the symptoms are yeah death, 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 and death. <laughs> there are so <laughs> many moments. Your doctor, if you die, <laughs> <laughs> there are so many moments. Um, like in between scenes where it felt like the editor was like, how do I transition quick? Let me go into the folder. That's just <laughs> Beth running with her yeah. dogs. Like <laughs> that happens like six times. I, I, think. <laughs> and, I mean, it ends up becoming a, a plot point. Cause we learned that she was a, a cross country star mm. and it doesn't really factor much yeah, into it. It would have been cool. You know, it would have been cool. There's a moment at the end of this movie where her son Ben, I believe, um, is a uh, boy. Yeah, is is running to his treehouse because mm. his stepdad, or no, his dad, biological dad, comes over and I, I maybe is drunk, but is like causing a scene. Yeah, and it's not like so. That's the weird. I'll get to that in a second. But that's the weird thing is that like they normally I feel like that character would just go from bad to worse and yeah. be like, I'm and then getting... they give him like a redemption arc. They try yeah. to in the last like ten minutes. Yeah. yeah. How did you feel about Keith's oh redemption? God. Keith, I mean, there's a scene where he threatens Zac Efron, and Zac Efron yeah. says, like, you're not a bad guy, Keith, as opposed to everything that has been set up with him. I know. Because he's, and I think that also comes in, that comes after the scene where he's drunk, and he sees Zac, this is after he's given information, which also goes, too much to talk about. But yeah, Zac Efron does not reveal why he is Oh my god. We're going to have to Okay, let's talk about this part first. We got to talk about that. <laughs> but um he the ex-husband reveals it reveals info to uh Taylor Schilling to Beth. Uh-huh. And he does I that scene I think he was he was not the worst person because yeah. it is like cuz there is a question Pose that like oh we don't really know how my brother died. They say friendly fire was a possibility. So the exes was like you know this is this is definitely creepy. Yeah. Um. And then so she breaks up with him and Zac Efron is just like walking his dog in the town. And then, <laughs> and then Keith like confronts him and starts yelling at him. Which I mean he's already gotten what he wants. She's broken up with him. Yeah. But then he pulls a gun out on him. Yeah. And as especially as a cop like that's. <laughs> yeah, and then it's Zac Efron who diffuses it by like beating the shit out of it. <laughs> well, he just uh, he like takes the gun and and takes mm-hmm. the bullets That's out. The, the born identity. <laughs> yeah, and um, and then he go and then so when he says you're not a bad guy, Keith, and I, I we I feel like we both pulled out our notes and we're like, 
<laughs> yeah, we're like, like what? Oh, oh boy. <laughs> yeah. Um, I know you just try. <laughs> I know you're being belligerent and just tried to shoot me. But yeah. And it's like, and before this, he's like abused his power as an officer and mm-hmm. like neglected his not neglected his son, but he like doesn't support the things that his son actually yeah. likes. And um, it's been very. Uh, very emotionally manipulative to to his ex-wife. Yeah, he's always like, oh, if you try to, like, you know... Uh, basically, he says, like, he's saying, like, if you do anything I don't like, I'm going mm. to take our son and uh, and get away. And he's like, and I could... And basically, he's always saying, I could do it, too, because his dad is, like, the the judge, like, the, the DA He's or running something. for mayor, I Yeah, think. yeah. yeah. <laughs> his dad is also a wiener. That guy's yeah, always just... Dad, <laughs> I thought we were going to get some more with him. He reminded me of the mayor from the Toxic Avenger. Have you seen that? Yeah. Yeah. He's just like the big guy who's like, oh, I have power. Yeah. <laughs> he also it reminded me of the guy in Jaws who goes, a what? <laughs> he goes, that there's a tiger shark. He does. He a does. A what? A what? <laughs> the, best, the best actor in movie history. <laughs> um, Wait, we ha- should we talk about the, the Zac the, Efron thing? Well, should we talk about... Keith's what, ultimate redemption or the setup of the romance? Let's talk about the setup of the romance and then yeah. we'll get to Keith. Okay, we'll jump back to that. Yeah, because Zach Efron walks all this way, which, yeah, he figures out where she lives by holding up the photo of her to another picture because <laughs> he scoured the internet for lighthouses yeah. and has, and matches it up perfectly with the photo he has, which I guess he just Googled lighthouse. Yeah, it's like every lighthouse in America – like, cause it he doesn't, checked all of them. It doesn't. The picture doesn't even show you like if it would be East Coast or West Coast. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> I should have had like a the town name behind it. Mm. But um, yes, yeah, so he walks all the way there, and so you figure this is gonna it's gonna be like Rambo, which I think we set up. Yeah, yeah. Much. There's a lot of Rambo parallels in this <laughs> one. He walks there and is he meets her at the at her. Uh, extremely beautiful dog kennel. Yeah. And he's, like, trying to tell her, and she will not let this man speak. I know. Every time he tries to say, well, I'm here because she goes, she's like, oh, you uh, you, you need, uh, you want to house your dog? And he's like, no, you see, I'm here. And she goes, oh, you saw the ad. You want a job. Yeah. And he's and like. I think this is after he mentioned that he walked from Colorado. Yeah. And then she like at first she doesn't like him because she like is like oh he's a weirdo why did mm-hmm. he come this far and then she goes to see her grandma who also works at the kennel yeah. and is like you need to get rid of this guy and grandma's just a a card <laughs> she's, <laughs> she's a scamp she her and and Keith are my favorite characters yeah. and also the the boy because like <laughs> so she, not the main character <laughs> yeah because grandma just doesn't give a shit she's like her daughter's like did you get rid of him she goes no I gave him the job. <laughs> Yeah, uh, that the grandma character. I feel like she has been in like a million of these, yeah. like made for TV. Like, oh yeah, she was in she was in Will and Grace. Um, yeah, there's a lot of she's in a lot of these. Yes, she looks super familiar. I honestly yeah. thought she I, might be. Um, I really thought she was gonna die in this one. I thought oh, she was gonna die by the end. Yeah, I mean they kind of like almost foreshadow it because she's she talking said, about yeah, how like she, she had a stroke yeah and she's like oh i'm so old oh and she'll take she, care of you when i'm dead <laughs> she, she had a good line where uh beth is talking about she's like guys are never this good she's like i need to end it now she's like he won't be good for uh uh ben and like he'll she'll, he'll walk out on us and then grandma is like Oh, and then Ben will grow up and move far away from here and never talk to you again, and I'll die and leave you all alone. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, that's such like a mom thing, like <laughs> to show you how ridiculous you're being. There is one other thing that I had learned about this movie, and it was uh, one of my close friends from like elementary school to high school. His name's Shane. Shout out Shane. Shout out. But and shout out his mom Sue. Shout out Sue. Shout, love shout out Sue. <laughs> but um, I remember. Because she would always drive us to the movies, and she knew I love movies, so she'd ask about things, and she'd mention things that she watched. And she <laughs> talked about, she was like, oh, me and me and Shane watched this, uh, that Zac Efron movie, The Lucky One, just because it was, like, on TV. And they're, because they're the kind of people, like, they they love watching a movie like this just to laugh at it. Uh-huh. And so, like, do you remember the part when um, Zac Efron is just, like, carrying, like, tons of dog food on his yeah. shoulder? And they mentioned that part, it's like... Oh man, wish I had a man that would just carry the dog food. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is such like a perfect man kind of thing, mm. and it's not like I feel like you can do the perfect man trope and mm. be charming, 
case in point, uh, the guy in Holes who goes, I can fix that. <laughs> <laughs> or uh, Wesley from The Princess Bride, mm-hmm. who isn't that quite perfect, but definitely in that first scene where he's like, as oh, you yeah. wish, is like such a dreamboat. Mm-hmm. But like Zac Efron, I just feel like was so like, <sighs> he seems like a, I don't want to like talk bad about, you know, someone as a whole like that. But in this movie, he's so like boring Yeah. until later, which then feels unearned because he just kind of opens up out of nowhere, I feel yeah. like. He is so, he's playing such the perfect man. The writing is n- not helping him at all. Yeah. Because it's like, okay, you're you're muscular, you're a veteran, so you're like, you know, you're noble, um, you know, you're respectful of women, uh-huh. you play the piano, uh Yeah. You're, you're good no with philosophy. Kids. <laughs> yeah, he's into philosophy too. Oh, yeah. It does feel weird when uh and she just is immediately like, I don't like him, get him out of here. Yeah. And it's like super resentful. And there's a scene where like he's sitting in their kitchen talking with their mom with the mom and he, she's like, uh, he mentions like, oh yeah, I went to college. He's like, I studied, or uh, like, or no, he only did like a year of college. Uh-huh. He's like, oh, I love uh, philosophy classes. And she's like, oh really? And he, <laughs> she says, quote your favorite philosopher. Yeah, <laughs> which is very much a uh, like a oh you like movies? Name every movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then uh, he, he does some quote, and she's like, that's gotta be Voltaire. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then he goes, it's Doctor Seuss. And I was like, that's pretty good, but. The, another weird moment with Zac Efron is that um, there's a part where Beth and her kid are making jambalaya, mm-hmm. and then the kid goes, do you like jambalaya? <laughs> and the mom's like, don't invite him. Don't make eye contact. <laughs> and then you think, like, I feel like the, the archetype is for Zac Efron to go, like, oh, I don't want to impose, and then something mm-hmm. happens that makes him stay. Yeah. But he just comes into the kitchen and is like, just like the, yeah. The kid invited me <laughs> yeah. in. He's like, I'm here to eat food now. <laughs> I am here for the jambalaya. <laughs> and uh, so that was weird. Um, but yeah, but so the, the whole movie has a, I, it kind of feels like it, it disappears for a bit, but there's the tension of, oh, when's she going to find yeah. out about the photo and that that's Which why he's here. It's kind of dumb because it's like, he could have pretty easily explained. I found yeah. this picture, and it and every and my friend Victor told me it was a lucky, uh, it was a guardian angel, and I feel like I needed to come thank you because that's yeah. what he tells the audience. Mm-hmm. But instead, he goes, "I don't know how to say this," and keeps it secret for yeah. what he months. Keeps, <laughs> I, it feels like it, maybe years. <laughs> 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 like, if she never asked, would he ever tell her? Is it, yeah. Why does he need to live this lie? Like, that's a good, like, I mean, even if he's, like, wanting to hook up with her, which that's the only explanation I have for why he doesn't tell her yeah. the truth, is that he's like, actually, I want to want to hang around here. Yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, that's still, like, a pretty good in. <laughs> yeah, and it's like, it's like one of those, if that story happened in real life, it would end up on Instagram in, like, a cute little, like, yeah. today in he history. Found, he found... Her, her brother sadly passed away while serving in Iraq. He found her picture, tracked her down, and now they're married. Yeah, it's like these. You know, this GI met this woman in, when he was liberating Paris in 1945. Yeah. Now they're together again, 70 years later. Mm-hmm. Like it would have been a sweet story, but in, but one, he won't say the damn thing. <laughs> he's like he's he's the worst Keanu Reeves line. In Point Break is a badass movie. Everyone should go watch that instead of this movie. And. <laughs> And now I'm fired up. But, like, <laughs> there's a point in Point Break where Keanu Reeves goes, why can't I say what I feel? And, and that's, that, he never does. Zac yeah. Efron never does That's this him movie. for, like, three-fourths of the movie. And and then the other annoying part is that no one will ever just ask him. Yeah. Like, at one point you think it's going to happen because the kid goes, he's the one with the secret. And I was like, oh, here it comes. Mm-hmm. And then she and then he goes, I saw him playing piano. And yeah. I was like, okay, whatever. <laughs> Uh, I guess I'll never get to know what happened to Zac yeah. Efron in war. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever happened to Aces? <laughs> Aces. But yeah, so we get we get to the end. Uh, Keith has threatened to shoot, or they've broken up. Keith has threatened to to shoot Zac Efron and, and his dog. In the cold light of day. <laughs> oh yeah, he pulls the gun on his dog, which is, all, in some sense, worse. <laughs> it's like, uh, it, haven't you ever seen John Wick? Yeah. <laughs> uh, but he pulls his gun there, and then. Or what is even happening? Keith goes said to Beth, and he's a, like, I, w- I want us to be a family again. Yeah. And she says, you know, very, you know, understandably, no. Yeah. And then. I think that's after he yeah. sobers up, right? I think he gets. He, yeah, a little He bit. says, you're not a bad guy. Keith goes to see his dad and, like, surrenders his badge, question mark? He le- Yeah, he leaves his badge there. I think yeah. his dad's going to let him keep it. Yeah. Uh, 
and then he goes over and mm -hmm. and the whole time he's holding a plate and so it feels really tense like he's gonna yeah. break the plate or I throw really, it. yeah I thought he was gonna smash that yeah but then Beth defuses it and takes the plate and mm -hmm. that's that and then we get to our redemption mm -hmm. moment and crazy yeah. finale. Well, before we get to that, I just just like you know who this guy Keith. He feels like he's a discount Mike, Michael Shannon. Like this yeah. feels like a role that Michael Shannon would for ate the hell up. for sure. And actually, I will say, be, I wasn't joking when I said like he was the character that made me feel the most. He did a good performance. Like as I a, think he did as with a what he has. Yeah, good for him. Like I was like, I want this guy. This to movie get didn't roles. deserve. This movie didn't deserve a, a fun <laughs> villain. But um, there's a moment where. Um, Logan, Zac Efron, helps Ben, the child, mm -hmm. uh, gain the confidence to play violin in church. Mm -hmm. and Which I found a video recently of like a, a uh, orchestra performance from like fourth grade. Uh -huh. And I was like, I played the viola. Oh. Uh, not for long because especially hearing – it was a <laughs> – it was a video, and you hear everyone playing, and it was so horrible. <laughs> and hearing this kid play, like, they do not, like, spruce it up. Like, hearing a child play a violin is horrible. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I feel like violin is one of those instruments, like, you got to really put yeah. the time in. There's, like, a moment where they kind of overdo it a little bit, but the first time they show Keith listening to him play violin and realize he's he's not bad, like, the, the look on his mm -hmm. face is, like, it's like subtle and like mm -hmm. it's him like looking like he's about to like let a tear fall and I was like this guy's like killing it like he's <laughs> acting his heart out and uh, so that's why I wish he had a better redemption arc um, mm -hmm. because I don't feel like he with as shitty as he was before I don't think he earned full redemption mm -hmm. but then again Darth Vader <laughs> oh this Killed guy millions. was um, he was on Mad Men he's uh -oh. done a lot of TV he was on, oh yeah, he was on Mad Men from 2010 to 2015, The Connors from 2018 to 2022. Wait, what's the actor's name? Uh, J.R. Ferguson. Shout out J.R. Ferguson. <laughs> Come on the podcast. <laughs> J.R., just like the TV show. <laughs> but he, uh, they start arguing because he wants to be a family again. The mom says no. The son freaks out, which also it's like during a hurricane or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, which they don't really a freak explain. Rainstorm. Yeah. Uh, but the kid runs off into the night. And the dad runs after, which also Zac Efron conveniently shows up at the same time. And they're uh -huh. like, quick, we got to help him. Yeah. And he runs to his, like, secret uh, tree fort, uh -huh. which also has a bridge. Yeah, oh, it's badass. Yeah, it is. A, it is oh, it looks like the forest mood as of some, Endor. As someone whose dad never built them a tree house, which, <laughs> as someone closer to my dad's age than I was then, I respect it. <laughs> I can build that shit. <laughs> but uh, he runs to this, to this awesome tree fort that's over a river that has a, a rope bridge yeah. over it. Uh, he gets on it, but the everything's so crazy. The rope bridge comes loose. Uh -huh. The kid's holding on. Keith tries to save him, and then the rope bridge snaps, or like on one side, and then Zac Efron is able to get in and get the kid and bring him back, but Keith's leg is stuck, stuck I yeah. guess. He just says, he just says it. Yeah. Um, yeah, they don't show it. Yeah, and then the rain's so bad that the – the treehouse comes loose yeah. and falls and crushes him. And there he goes. <laughs> Full bridge to Terabithia death. Yeah. And then they all say, like, um, or at least uh, Zac Efron says to Keith's dad, he's like, your son saved Ben, not me. And I'm mm -hmm. like, no, I think you did. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess Keith saved him, kept him from watching away yeah. long enough for Logan to save him. Long enough for the real hunk of the movie to save yeah. him. But I just wish, like, because Keith was a more interesting character, I wish he actually had had a good redemption. I, I needed another hour, I'll say. <laughs> <laughs> this movie, it was 20 minutes short and Think Like a Man. It felt like six hours longer. Yeah. Especially because it's a lot of things that just feel like it's from a commercial. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, oh, Zach Efron's walking around with his dog. Yeah. Now Kate's walking around with her dog. Now they're both walking around. Yeah. That's, oh, that's what I was going to say because I didn't want to spoil it earlier is that I feel like – because it did feel a little weird to me that the closest person to this kid is his mom, Beth, mm -hmm. and the two people saving him are his, like, yeah. weird – dad and then this guy he just met <laughs> and so i felt like it was like a tad sexist that the mom couldn't jump in there and save him and so that's why i was saying they set up that she's an amazing cross-country cross runner. runner just change it to she's an amazing swimmer and then she saves him 
I don't know if being amazing swimmer means you could swim through like tidal waves. True, but I guess in that tiny little stream. Yeah, or they could change it to a a, a time a, a instance where she would have to run fast over <laughs> over cross country. But oh no, she's a long jumper, so she can completely jump the stream. Yeah, and save him. It'd be like I always thought it was a good moment in the Bumblebee movie with Haley Steinfeld oh, shit, with the swimming. Yeah, thing. she's like a diver, and so she has to dive at the end. Mm-hmm. Um. But yeah, Haley Steinfeld should come on the show because yeah. <laughs> uh, I really think we'd hit it off, Haley. <laughs> <laughs> Haley, please. We like your movies. We assume you like your movies. Let's talk about them. <laughs> it was PG 13, so like all these people could go see it. Um, but the sex scene oh, was yeah. pretty steamy. The, the, which. I was laughing because, like, the setting that they have it in. Because, oh, yeah, we didn't even mention it. Zac Efron buys, like, a, a oh, yeah. shack. Oh, like, yeah. a horribly dilapidated house. And it's like, uh, I, he very much turned into the, the guy from Holes. So yeah. I can fix that. Yeah, he always is fixing shit that, mm. you know, being a Marine doesn't mean you can fix a, yeah. a pontoon boat. Oh, yeah, he also fixes the boat that yeah. is her parents that she loves that hasn't run in years. Yeah, the flying fish, it's <laughs> called. But uh, he f- he when he first gets it, there's a montage and there's like all these like, just like shades like the like closed blind shades whatever, uh-huh. whatever you call them. But then he he just has tons of these and then you see him like building an outdoor shower but with these blinds with it oh, and yeah. then that's the shower he's taking later that then Turns they have, se- the they sex, have sex in. in. Yeah. I wanted to say in that sex scene, there's a part where one of their hands goes through one of those blinds and it's mm-hmm. like a shot where everything else is out of focus yeah. and the hand is coming through the blind and it looks <laughs> it looks like uh when Gollum is watching <laughs> the the fellowship in Moria and his fingers come up over the bars <laughs> that's like that's all I could think about <laughs> um but yeah I was like wow this is a uh, for PG mm. the team it's giving given some soft core for, yeah. for those teens. <laughs> hey, they need it. <laughs> I think that was probably a big. That was probably a big selling point to like teenage girls at the time of like I get to see hunky Zac Efron uh-huh. and uh, uh, the wild cat himself. Also have sex. <laughs> I don't think there was a single shirtless Zac scene. I guess not. Seems like there should have been. I feel like there was. I don't know. I yeah. won't remember this movie. <laughs> Also, what the hell was happening when they go when they both end up fully clothed in the shower? Why? What? <laughs> oh why, yeah, come on. Why was one of them in the shower fully clothed? Because then the other one Wait, comes in. How does that happen? <laughs> what? <laughs> did, was he starting the shower, or did are they like having sex there and then bump into the shower? I, I think maybe like audience, you'll have to watch. Yeah, find let us out. know. I'm not gonna watch it again. <laughs> uh, oh, we are. <laughs> what, new podcast. It's the lucky, the lucky ones. Every week we watch the lucky one. Wow, it gets better with age. <laughs> <laughs> by by every day. <laughs> but I, I actually, I will reiterate. I really did like the relationship between the kid and Zac Efron. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, there's a part where because the kid's like you know getting bullied and he's like not can't stand up mm-hmm. for himself and Zac Efron. Rather than being all like macho, like his dad mm. is like, you know, when it's a, he's like, you're the guy next to me. Like as a Marine, you don't care about yourself. You care about, you protect the guy next to you. Mm-hmm. And I thought that was really sweet that they were each other's guy next to him. Yeah, that is true about like, you feel like in this movie, he'd, in a, another version of this movie, he'd be like, all right, this is how you throw a grenade on him. Yeah. <laughs> um, when said it's like, oh, let me play the piano. Yeah. That uh. Nicholas Sparks. Mm-hmm. I don't know enough about. I can't make any claims about. <laughs> it does. Twice. I was thinking, like, especially thinking about this in terms of like the time period, since we're flashing back to it. But yeah. like, I mean, this is media reflecting the Iraq War <laughs> at this time. Yeah, but, I thought about that actually. That I was like, it was such a thing in those days. For a, a while after this too, that it was like mm-hmm. every like villain was mm-hmm. uh, Al Qaeda or Taliban. Yeah. Like, it, I mean, even like when you think about like. The first Iron Man yeah. is. I think they change in the comics that, like in the, originally he was a uh, he was in Vietnam, uh-huh. and then they updated it to be Iraq. Yeah, and so that's very interesting that now like this the cur- still current largest franchise ever, <laughs> still has a canonical Iraq War. Yeah, I don't know, man. 
uh, I don't. But, I think this might be our first. Uh, don't bu- don't worry about it. You know. <laughs> yeah. Which also is funny because when we pulled it up on Netflix, it had this little yeah. little tag that said, "This is one of the most thumbed up movies by members who watched it." I guess out of any movie on Netflix. Yeah. Which is, I guess, it fits in with that thing that like rom coms live on Netflix now, or just like yeah. romance movies in general. Yeah. Because this definitely plays like a like a made for TV. Uh-huh. Movie like Hallmark movie. That's so why I, I can see why it would do well on Netflix. You can you can put this on. You don't have to pay much attention to it. Yeah, but we did. Yeah, we were there every frame. <laughs> we were not the lucky ones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that makes a lot of sense. But <laughs> if this is the kind of thing you want to watch on Netflix, you only have to April thirty. <laughs> oh, but hurry it up! <laughs> All right. So I guess last thing of just like, does it hold up? Did this. How how did this match against your expectations, however limited? Uh, about right. I wasn't expecting a lot from this movie, and in the end, all of my takeaways were mm. that the guy who played Keith was pretty good, actually. Yeah. I like him as an actor. But yeah, I don't see myself ever watching this again mm-hmm. <laughs> or bringing it up to anyone. <laughs> it is funny, though, because at least um, like when I mentioned this to friend of the show Oriana <laughs> oh yeah today she was like I said oh do you know that movie and she said yeah you bet I know that well movie. I was actually I was like I need to ask her because of the uh, previously mentioned that she likes rom-coms mm-hmm. I was like I gotta know yeah. did she say that she is she did she a she fan? didn't say if she's a fan um but she knows I think especially for just this generation just like it, it was a movie with Zac Efron at the exact right time that they wanted a movie with Zac Efron yeah and yeah. then, yeah, it's not a movie for us. Um, Maybe if we had watched it in the heyday of the yeah. of, of the the, the I feel like F- I would. I F- definitely would have hated this more because I was very like uh, chick flick. Meh. Yeah, I want to watch the raid. <laughs> Expendables two. Oh, the best movie ever. Expendables two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the, during the height of the uh, Efronaissance. Yeah, but then just like, <laughs> yeah. It perfectly, I guess it matched my expectations. I was always curious about this one just because, like, I knew that there was, like, soldier stuff yeah. in the being, which also feels like something to kind of aim at, like, the the guys who take their girlfriends there on a date. Mm. I'm just like, eh, you know, I like military things. Yeah, something um, to get the guys in. Yeah, but overall just... Yeah, you don't need to watch it. Yeah. <laughs> you won't miss it if you miss it on Netflix. It's fine, yeah. Yeah, it's not. I would not say it's horrible. Just it is so like baseline. Yeah, like, it does absolutely nothing. Look up the special. Keith scenes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you you've been really hyping up Keith. I think he was like he did fine with what he had. I I just, because he made me have like every time he was on screen until his weird redemption, I would be like, <laughs> God, I hate this guy. <laughs> and I was like, this is the only thing I'm feeling in this movie. Yeah. So oh, I like that's Keith. True. That's it for for this weekend. Yep. Coming up next weekend. I don't even know. I'm excited. Um, so we have so the two big movies next weekend are the Ardman stop motion a- stop motion animated film, The Pirates Band of Misfits. <gasps> I've never seen it, and it's, I, yeah, I feel well, like I'll we'll like get it. Into that. And then there is another rom com <gasps> called The Five Year Engagement, starring Jason Siegel and Emily Blunt. That sounds familiar i did talk to you about it before but um that one i am curious about yeah but yes and to my knowledge uh the pirates is available on hbo max and uh the five-year engagement is definitely available on hulu i believe so if y'all want to watch along at home yes yes watch along watch along enjoy enjoy some films flash on back to the theaters 10 years ago hop in your uh delorean and (laughs) and go see pirates band of (laughs) misfits yeah you're a big pirate a fan of pirates in general i do i love nautical skullduggery (laughs) and tomfoolery oh that's most jacob's sentence you could ever hear (laughs) all right Thank you so much for joining us yes. for this second episode. Very different films. Next week's going to be even more different. Yeah. We'll I have see. high hopes. We'll mm. see. We'll see. But all right. Thank you. You can follow me on Twitter at C. Spalton. And I'm at Jacob Sanger, S-A-E-N-G-E-R.
on, and on Twitter <laughs> and, on, and on Instagram, I'm Commander in Beef with underscores between the words. <laughs> yes, and um, yeah, be sure to be sure to give us a, a like and subscribe, yeah. and uh, or a follow on on Apple Podcasts. So hopefully, yeah. hopefully you're seeing this there, but. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, thank you for watching. And uh, backflip and dab onto that like button. (laughs) Good night. (laughs) 